go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, welcome back. Um, let's do a little bit of a recap. I'll do a bit of a longer one because I know B missed the last one. Although I think that was the only one you missed since that time. So we'll, we'll kind of pick up from there. Um, so last session, um, we had just finished clearing out uh, the Lordless Crown mercenaries um, from Castleton after you had kind of announced to um, uh, Captain Edder, the former Castleton guard captain and leader, uh, that you had killed Lena Orbweaver. Um, and sensing as this was the best time um, to take back over uh, of the city, take back control of the city, try to get rid of the Lordless Crown that were kind of permeating throughout and also get Valdru out of there. Um, he charged the castle and he asked if you guys could um, kind of go out to the northern gate and make sure that none of the extra Lordless reinforcements could charge in behind them. Um, you successfully did that with quite a bit of uh, panache, let's say. It was quite nice. Uh, just lots of fighting in the streets, running through people. Um, Dent uh, and um, uh, and Ivo kind of and uh, Rowena got above ground. There was a flamethrower. It was pretty sick. You guys chopped this giant two-headed creature in half as it was coming out of a portal. It was great. It was just a wonderful uh, city battle. Um as you were doing so, you did run into an ally that you weren't expecting, someone who was mem a member of the Deep Shadow. Um, and uh, as Rowena and him, uh, a halfling named Benna, conversed, Benna shared where a little safe house was where you guys can kind of hide out uh, and rest up as you were waiting um, for um, for kind of next, next steps, next day, kind of figure out what you wanted to do. Um, so you stayed in this uh, Deep Shadow hideout, and when you awoke the next day, um, you were greeted um, by the boss of this particular branch of the Deep Shadow, Emowyn. Uh, and she essentially mugged you, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, held you up and demanded that you pay uh, for your stay in perpetuity since you now knew where the safe house was and you weren't official Deep Shadow members. Um, she kind of tricked you into this false negotiation where she kind of showed her prowess and was able to paralyze most of you. Um, and she basically gave you an ultimatum, join the guild, do a mission for me, uh, or pay up. Uh, you opted, uh, kind of given your background on what you wanted to do and not having wanting new ties, um, you did pay, uh, paid up the 100 gold pieces she was asking for, uh, and then left uh, the safe house. On the way out of the safe house, though, Ivo noticed uh, a familiar figure sitting in the corner, um, a uh, hidden, trying to hide himself, Kenku figure in the corner. Uh, noticing him but not wanting to make a ruckus in an area where you're already kind of at odds, you decided to leave. But on the way out, you asked if Dent could kind of hang back uh, and see if this figure was sh um, kind of tailing you even further. Um, unfortunately, you didn't see Dent again after that. Uh, <laughs> and you all kind of decided to get into the city. Uh, as you passed into the gate and spoke to one of the guardsmen, um, you were informed that all citizens were in, like uh, instructed to stay in their homes. Um, as it seemed as though Wadep City, uh, the capital, was moving armed forces um, towards Castleton. Um, and with that information, you headed towards the castle, uh, Blackstaff Keep, um, to rendezvous with um, Captain Edder and kind of figure out what was going on. Um, you, you spoke with him and Lieutenant Corning for a bit and discovered that indeed um, there must have been informants in Castleton at the time. They fled to Castle uh, to Castle Wadep, informed the Lord's Council there uh, that a coup had occurred and the usurper, Captain Edder, had killed Lena Orbweaver and this had initiated essentially what was about to be a war between these two major cities uh, on Wadep. Um, as you were kind of having this conversation, two big things happened. One, uh, you were kind of conversing with these two uh, really attractive, pretty-looking half-elves um, who you discovered were actually two of the three owners and creators of Forward Motion Solutions, and Captain Edder was kind of grilling them, interrogating them, trying to find out more about their airship technology, what they were building uh, for um, for Lena. Uh, they were, for the most part, being pretty open because they really didn't care for Lena, you found out, but were getting paid, and these this is what a new company does sometimes, is you take on contracts you don't always agree with to make sure your company stays afloat. Um, as this was happening, though, and as this, this conversation of battle came up and not really knowing if you could stand your ground or defend against this giant army coming your way, um, another familiar figure appeared out of the um, out of the crowd kind of congregating uh, in this throne room. 
uh, and that was Captain Yao, um, the pirate captain, also former mercenary uh, of the Lordless Crown um, that you had previously uh, essentially bested and uh, were the reason why he was captured by the Tharvan uh, military. Um, what's strange, though, is the last time you saw him, you had knocked him unconscious. He was also blinded in his combat. He didn't have eyes anymore. Uh, and now he seemed to have these like slightly metallic artificial eyes uh, installed. And he hinted that he had them. Uh, um, they were gifted to him by the Urzatsarai um, in some type of deal. You're not sure what. But now he seemed to be serving those same purposes and made illusion that you guys had a common, uh, a common ally. Uh, and hinted that if you needed more warriors, the Urzatsarai um, had some ready to go if they were needed for certain reasons um kind of opted not to go on for a head-on collision uh with this with with wadap and with the capital and so you uh were talking to the um the two leaders of the forward motion solutions a bit um discovered that the third one uh the one that leo Real, uh the male uh half elf seemed to be a little infatuated with was worried about her she hadn't come back after these um combat encounters had taken place uh, and you went to go find her at an inn called the shores rest you found her there she was uh, hung over and still a little drunk from the night before because she had been drinking her way uh her anger basically at lena and not wanting to do these terrible things to the airships that lena was requesting um she let you know of that um she also agreed um as ivo had asked um if they help Truna get back that you can keep one of the airships. And so you made your way to where they were secretly building these airships. Um, and while you were there, you were set upon by a very uh, troubling scene. Uh, the apparition of Lena, uh, it seemed to be her ghost, the smoky ghost, had appeared all of a sudden. And it was speaking in this disembodied male demonic voice. Uh, and you discovered that the mastermind behind Jackson um, and Lena and whomever else all along was actually this demon planning to reinvade, um, reinvade Yaren uh, for who knows what purpose at this point, uh, named Gratz. Uh, and Gratz summoned a couple other of his demon friends to attack you and best you. Um, after some clever attacks, you were able to send one off flying off into the ether. Uh, you jumped on an airship and hightailed it uh, back to the Temple of the Saviors, where your strategy was hopefully to find Sonara and Firo so that you could present Sonara to the Lord's Council in Wadep and hopefully prove that Jackson had actually orchestrated this plot all along um, and that Sonara would take back her rightful place on the Council uh, and bring stability to Wadep once more. Uh, and so that's where we'll take off. Um, we, are, uh, <laughs> we are on the airship um, flying over uh, Celadrine Lake on the way to the Temple of the Saviors. Um, your airship that you have is a, is a faster one, quite faster than one of them. It's a little bit of a smaller one. Um, it's a prototype, in fact, as Truna is kind of piloting and steering this from the, from the wheel at the, at the kind of stern of the ship. Um, and so you're probably going right now maybe about 10 to 15 miles per hour, a uh, few hundred feet. Uh, up above uh, this, uh, above the ground level of this. And so it'll probably take you about an hour-ish to get to the Temple of the Saviors at this speed. Um, you guys are in the air. It's still um, pretty early in the day. Um, I would say, you know, the sun's pretty right above you, so noon-ish, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., um, and you're all out there, uh, kind of on there. Um <coughs> So uh, you guys have Truna kind of there. You guys are on this. I would like uh, all of you actually to roll a perception check as you're kind of getting into the cloud, starting to climb a little bit higher until your um, your your place levels out. And uh, DM, so we're uh, heading over the lake essentially, right? Because we're heading towards Temple of the Sabers. <laughs> Correct. Yep. Okay. Remember, we almost got a boat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, actually, De you're not on there right now. Just one quick thing to note. Right. I figured I'm, I'm still in that whatever area unknown, right? Correct. Yeah. Right now, the party doesn't know where you are. You hung back. The gates closed behind you, and so far, no one has been able to see you. You were on a mission to try to... Um, follow this 
uh, I guess a, a, a Zatsurai based Kenku uh, figure that has been following you since the City of the Dead. Um, but it's mm. it's worth noting, uh, Bernie, that Mo volunteered you <laughs> to stay behind. <laughs> hey, hey, Mo is my best friend. And I if appreciate Mo volunteered that Nate me, didn't disclose because that. And that's exactly <laughs> what I need. Oh, that's funny. Um, so uh, anyone who got an 18? Was that Thad? Uh, Thad, so you actually can see a bit uh, over um, kind of the side of the ship as you're moving kind of in this um, western direction. As you look behind you where you're leaving, um, to the south, you can see these... Um, shapes in the sky they seem to be these circular shapes on the sky and there seem to be maybe three of them that you can tell but there might be more it's a little hard to see from this distance because it's miles away but you know the only reason you could see it is you guys are so high up and these shapes also seem to be on the same distance above the air um can i have you just roll a um intelligence check um and add your proficiency bonus because of your martial background No, you were muted. What'd you get? <laughs> uh, nothing yet. Let me uh do that. Intelligence, mm -hmm. and then my proficiency is plus three, so that'll give me a total of ten. That's okay. That's enough. No, sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Um, <laughs> especially you, you, you would know this given your background. Those are absolutely airships heading uh, towards the city of Castleton. Um, you can't quite tell how many. Um, it's a little hard to see based on that. But you do know typically, one, airships heading over land is trouble. Um, those are almost always acts of violence or war. It's one of the reasons why airships aren't allowed to travel over land. It's like one of the overall rules of, of all of the islands is air travel over land um, is strictly enforced and regulated. Um what you do know, though, is if there are that many airships in the air, there are a considerable amount of troops on the ground heading that way. Um, yeah. You said you got it. What was your total? So you got 10 total? I just want to see how much information you picked uh, up. No, I actually got 13 total. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit more with that. Um, one thing you do know about military taxes as well. Um, if, if there are airships in the air and this is an actual act of violence... The Lord's Council would likely be under security. They would not be with this contingent of the army. Uh, this isn't a diplomacy mission. This is an, a violence mission. Um, so they are, the Lord's Council is either likely at Castle Wadep uh, or somewhere in a secure area in the city. Um, but you see this as you're going towards the Temple of the Saviors. Uh, with that being said, kind of kicking off where we're going, what would you guys like to do? Um, I have a question for Truna. Yeah. To, um, so curious about this airship. Can you tell me more about it? Like um, the, I guess you call it exact features and, you know, you designed this, like, tell us about your kind of your, your, what you designed and what you're proud of. Uh, well, this one's like I said, a, a special one. You know, she kind of points back um, the, 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 uh, Daisy and Crystal that we have installed on this one is um, a little special. Uh, one, you can see it's quite a, quite a bit smaller, and you kind of look at it, it's really only the size of maybe like I don't know like two feet by like three feet tall. Um, and, and you guys have all seen airships before. It's, they're very common in yarn. It's how you go from island to island for the most part. Um, and they're usually huge. Like they're they're usually three times that size at least. Um, this ship is also quite a bit smaller. Um, and so she says, like, so, you know, I was one of the first people to be able to find out how to get the same uh, harmonic resonance from from the from the arcane magic that lifts these things into a smaller area. And it's actually helped us be able to create a smaller platform in general. Uh, so this ship um, is quite a bit smaller and nimbler and faster uh, than the slow pieces of trash um, <laughs> grid makes. Uh, anyway, I just know how do you not innovate after literally a thousand years it, it really is silly um but it's, what about, it's rather nimble um and we could probably outrun anything else in the sky 
Okay, that's really good to know. We can we got speed on our side. Um, what about any sort of weapons or anything that if we do come into a sort of a battle situation? Well, it wasn't really made for that, but we did install um, a small ballista uh, at the front of the <clears throat> at the front of the bow. Uh, one thing I'll say about it, because <clears throat> again, you know, what's the point of having a ballista that's just an easy target? Uh, it's undermounted, so it's actually not on top of the ship. There are controls at the front of the ship where you can kind of navigate it, and it's put in a way just a little bit underneath <clears throat> the deck, so that you can uh, just kind of see the like the, the main spear of the ballista sticking out from underneath, um, kind of pointed forward. Um, and you and it's got um, maybe about like a forty-five degree arc that it can turn in either direction. Uh, but basically, it's like a forward-facing weapon. There's not a lot really on the side. So anything it's trying to attack, uh, it needs to be, for the most part, in view of. Uh, very clear, this ship is really meant to outrun uh, things. Um, but she does point out that, yeah, I just it, what's nice about its size, though, is only one person needs to operate it. Uh, but they would be need to be below deck. And the ballista, now I'm, I'm a little older mercenary i've spent time on ships like this but remind me what a ballista is exactly just uh, like a one-time missile she kind of rolls her eyes that the comment of like an old-time mercenary uh, and she says it's a big fucking crossbow <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh so are we still It'll going do some damage the right way it looks like there's I, we're, we're not going back that way, right? No. We are not. Uh, yeah. Our, our initial plan was to kind of um, avoid the main battle and see if we could find a way to kind of, you know, negotiate things, stop them from coming to blows. Uh, but it seems like the timing on that pretty tight she kind of looks back she's like yeah i mean that's definitely not my strong suit so i don't know what that's going to lead to but it anyone not dumb probably knows that's trouble <laughs> uh all right well i guess we'll we'll keep going then um i uh i can't stay in the air too long um air, airships over ground are not um not exactly welcome. So if we're going to the temple, I'm gonna probably land it in the lake, uh, and we'll I'll just wait there for for you guys to come back. Mm. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, so you guys kind of go over there. Um, I will say since again you're you're basically just sitting on a flying ship for an hour ish. Um, you can count this as a short rest. If you do want to roll some hit dice to get some life points back or reset some things, you may do so now. Cool. Uh, are we able from the air to see any signs of the shark down below? <laughs> uh, roll a perception check. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Uh, but you you feel confident it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Our great white whale. Uh, let's let's hope Scrounger survives. We're flying over the lake. You are flying over the lake currently. Um, Ivo had some questions for Truna just about um, the airship that you're currently on. What makes it special? Truna shared um, that it's it's really meant to be an agile fast ship it's not really meant for combat um, it does have one forward mounted ballista under deck um, that you can you can shoot at things if needed uh, but it is definitely not like the most powerful um, ship in the fleet so to speak um, you do get the sense I will say since yep. she mentioned that though that there might be some that she made that they made that or more that way but this one was not one of them yeah, we learned last time that she was good at putting stealth uh, features in airships. Is that something this has, or just in as much as it's very agile? Correct. Yeah, this one isn't stealthy per se, but it's it's small. Um, you also notice that the ship almost looks like it's a giant seafaring ship, uh, but can fly. So it, 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 she did say she's going to land it in the lake, so you get the sense this can function as both a sailing vessel uh, and an airship, uh, but sailing in the islands is not a very 
needed thing. There are no really huge bodies of water. In fact, Celadrine Lake is like the, if not one of the biggest bodies of water in one place. Um, you know, it's about 20 or so miles uh, on its biggest side and, and certainly the deepest body of water that, that you've ever seen. So there's not a lot of seagoing vessels that are needed at this size, um, but it is a, a very unique airship uh, in, in that it's much smaller than the rest and very nimble. Okay, uh, so well, I'm sorry. As, are we... What was our Please motivation ahead, for a uh, group going to the, the Temple of Saviors again? Were we trying to reunite with... Um, we're trying to pick up the uh, young woman who we rescued from in the lake so that we could prove she was alive to the council? Correct, because technically she is the, 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 the lord that Lena stole so that she could plant Jackson in that space. Uh, and so they weren't going to do that until after uh, what you had learned while you were killing Lena is they were going to do that after they had kind of unleashed this virus on Wadep city. Jackson was going to come in as this knight in shining armor, rescuing everybody. And then he would get the seat. Um, but taking advantage of you guys killing Lena and putting captain Edder on the throne, essentially. Um, he basically said, this is a act of violence and, um, treason. And so, uh, he pushed the council to nominate him to that seat. And now they're attacking Castleton, uh, under the guise of restoring peace. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we should find our, our girl over at the temple of saviors and then head over to castle Wada, right? It's up to y'all. Technically, you can take the, the airship wherever you want. You can get the fuck out and go to a different <laughs> island if you really wanted to. <laughs> no, I, I like that plan. <laughs> yeah, I want to stay on what if. <laughs> uh, okay. I know what Romina wants to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you guys have gone. Uh, again, if you wanted to take a short rest um, on your character sheet and roll some hit dice mm -hmm. to get some life back or reset some things, you can do that now. Um, yeah, let me do that. As you guys are kind of coming in to the Temple of the Saviors, you can actually see it. it's a very big building and there's not really a lot around it. It's right on the edge of the lake, um, this kind of tall square pillar of a building. Um, and you can see now that you're at this height, that the actual tops of it are carved so that um, the gods, uh, the Savior gods are kind of almost like putting their like their upstretched hands up to the heaven almost like they're holding up something and you you see the imagery there of them basically being the people that lifted the islands um and you you see that Truno kind of says okay everyone hang on and the the altitude starts to go down from about a thousand feet to 800 feet to 600 feet and you're seeing the the kind of uh long arc that she's making she's turning back down into celadrine lake and she's trying to stay a little bit farther away from some of the bigger uh, populated areas although everything below you is populated because wadep's pretty metropolitan um, but she does land gracefully um into uh, into the lake and you do feel kind of the ground uh kick back up against you as you kind of feel that you've planted in there uh, but it does kind of whoosh, short back in uh, and slowly um, come to a stop um, near the shore. Um, and so you're about, um, you're about maybe 30 or so feet away from the shoreline, uh, as you come to a stop, uh, on, on Celadrine Lake, um, within sight of the Temple of the Saviors. And Trina kind of looks at all of you and she goes, Hey, this is about as far as I can take you. Um, airships can't, uh, hover over land for without drawing too much attention. So I'm going to keep it here for a bit, uh, in the meantime. Um, uh, I can send out a, a boat or I can try to get the airship a little bit closer to shore. I'm just worried we'll be a little bit too shallow to get too close. So are we swimming? Um, it's up to you. There's there's a, a small vessel that we can outrig as well if you needed to take it. It would it should fit most of you. All of you, I think. I'm cool to swim. Wait, how how far from shore are we? Only about thirty feet. Swim that. So you guys kind of splash um, in the water, start swimming. I guess it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thad, roll that same perception check since you were curious. <laughs> See what happens. Yes. Uh oh. Uh, you don't see anything. 
You do make it to shore, though, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> enough. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, so you guys kind of get to shore and you're a little bit wet soaked. You feel your, your clothes a little bit heavier, et cetera, but you're able to kind of get there and you start walking up to the temple of the saviors. Um, and as you're walking up, you're actually greeted by two familiar faces. Um, Jethro, um, the, the head uh, nurse who was kind of running operations around. Um, one thing to note too, as you're actually around here, you notice that the, out, the exterior kind of tents and cots that they had set up are much reduced. There are still some of them, uh, but you don't see the same number of people lying on stretchers. You don't see the same number of sick people. Um, so you get the sense that Sonara and Fira were successful in bringing the cure to this place. Um, but next to um, uh, Jethro uh, is Fenrisha, who is walking. She still seems a little weak. You can see she's kind of going a little slow. Jethro is supporting her, but they're walking up uh, as they see you guys kind of walking up to the Temple of the Saviors on a kind of front courtyard there. Uh, and they greet you. Uh, and Jethro says, Hi, guys. Welcome back. Um, was that your air? And then, like, Fenrisha just, like, gives him a huge elbow in the side. He's like, don't say shit about the airship. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so now she kind of takes over and she's like, oh, um, w welcome back. Um, thank you so much. We we were able to, as you can see, um, restore many of us back to full health. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I truly can't thank you enough. I didn't think I'd still be here. It was our pleasure. We're happy to help. Indeed. Um, this will this will mean a lot for the cause. Um in either case, I assume you're here for some purpose. Yes. Um, do you know where Firo is? Oh, uh, yes. Um, he's uh, been given guest quarters. Um, he brought a package with him. That package has been delivered safely. Um, it is also in the guest quarters with him. And Jethro kind of yes. looks over and you see him like, you mean the girl and then she like elbows him again <laughs> and he's like i'm not cut out for this stuff okay first of all everyone's talking about war happening in castleton we're seeing airships on the horizon sure. they were asking for medical support i don't know what's happening at this point but really i think this is above my head and i'm just gonna go back to doing the thing that i'm good at so call me if you need me i guess and he like walks back uh, uh and you're left there with ben Risha. <laughs> Uh, who kind of like rolls her eyes as he walks away and says, I guess sometimes you just hope for the best in people. In either case, um, if, if you'd like, I can show you where the guest quarters are. I don't know if you had uh, another need or anything else that I can help you with. Uh, we've certainly been um, appreciative enough. Same to the guest quarters would be direction great. Direction of the guest quarters. Uh, of course. Um, if you just head into the temple um, and then uh, before you take the stairs, just loop right back around it'll be the um the farthest door in the um the the lower western corner of the building um kind of like leaves you there and she kind of stays where she is you see her kind of walk back towards some of the um exterior cots again not very um heavily populated or filled up right now but she's still checking on a few people that are out there as they're kind of helping people recover um you do notice though that there are uh, attendants and nurses and they seem to be putting little droplets into people's mouths and then whispering something in their ear. Uh, and they start to get a little better and a little better and a little better. Um, but you guys head into the Temple of the Saviors. Uh, and you see a familiar sight, this ground floor there. And you see kind of the stairs that you had to sneak up and run past Janet the last time on. Uh, but you do loop back in and you see um, the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the directed kind of door on the western side of the building. Um, that, that leads to the guest quarters that you were were um, spoken of. Um, are you guys going in? Yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, so uh, I just want a marching order. Who's going in first? What order are we going in here? Go first. Okay. Um, so you open the door and you are like immediately stunned as you open it up. The scene in front of you looks pretty bad. Um, so right in front of you, you see Fira lying on the floor. You're not sure if he's alive or dead. There is blood uh, pretty uh, pretty laid out in a lot of different places. Um, Sonara is just visible. You can only really see her eyes uh, around this thing blocking your, uh, your, your, your vision. And 
and her eyes look scared and terrified, and you immediately know why uh, as you get a grasp of what in, what's in front of you. In front of you is a cloaked figure in these dark, dark robes. Um, at at one hand is this like just real grisly looking like huge dagger. It's like a Chris dagger, so it's a little serpentine in its shape. Uh, and he's he is going uh, like just mid stab trying to get at Sonara. Uh, and you hear. Uh, you won't get in the way uh, as he's going for this. And I'd like everyone to roll initiative for me. <laughs> Good. Here we go. <laughs> I hope we're fast. I hope you all are fast. Oh, all right. That's not bad. Wait, so DM, have we seen a, this creature before or a creature like it? Or I guess Rowena has, um, so she just stepped in. From this angle, you can't tell what type of creature it is. Um, but do me a favor, roll a history check for me. Uh, history is not my specialty, but here we go. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, the Not the voice necessarily, but the way it speaks, like its accent sounds familiar. Okay. Uh, the way it's like elongating its S's, the way it's speaking a bit, um, resonates for some reason. All right, what do we got here? Um, all right, 14 for Wiener. Seven for Zunas. And a 15 for Thad. Uh, and an 18 for Ivo. <laughs> the joys of fatherhood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick blank map for us and give you a sense of the space here. All right, so it's a pretty small room. You guys are coming in from this side. That's the door. You know, it's a little sloppy, but that's the door. Uh, and you guys are entering, um, entering kind of from the east, going into this space. Uh, let me just uh, open that. Oop, actually, that's the wrong one. Oops, sorry. Let me fix that real quick. My fault. My fault. My fault. All right. First door. Oh, why does it keep doing that? That's so weird. Should be able to see that, I think, yeah? Yes. All right. uh, it's like white, right? Do you yeah, see, you see the grid. Do you see There's like the box around one. you? Or no? No. Yeah, no illustration oh. layer. That's why. I just realized why it's doing it the wrong way. Half layer. Let's try that again. <laughs> it's like, why is it not loading up? All right. Uh, small box is the door. Rowena just stepped inside. Uh, the assassin is on the far end. Um, there are a couple of windows on this um, this side of the room as well where the assassins are. You assume that might have been the point of entry. So it kind of came in likely one of these windows, although they both seem to be closed at this point. Um, Firo is on the floor. 
kind of right in front of the assassin. Sonara is right behind it. Uh, first person up is unfortunately the assassin. Uh, and he is going to continue his <laughs> strike on Sonara. Uh, he, he rolled a five. That does not hit. So it, it's, it literally just missed your armor class. Uh, so Sonara is able to kind of like stave off this first attack. Um, uh, but Ivo, that brings it to you. Um, you are essentially right behind the doorway. So you can go anywhere you'd like uh, in that regard. Okay. Um, dope, dope. I have the perfect... <clears throat> I know exactly what I want to do. Let me just find it. So... Here. Um, let me read this. So I want to do... Um, so obviously I want to step into the room. Um... Are these squares, again, the, like, five foot? Or mm -hmm. how far away am I from the assassin? Is there, like, the five foot uh, range? 25, 30, 35. So about 40 feet. Okay, so I can't get to him yet for my... Yeah, Shadow Spikes 25. Shoot. So I'm going to step in to the room. I'm going to get as close... Can I? Okay. Um, yeah. If you could move, if you want to move me in, mm -hmm. um, just as close as possible to the assassin, and then uh, so just needed one more square. Um, and then I'm gonna, so I since I can't do my shadow spike, I'm gonna do my crossbow. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna do goading attack. Okay. To uh, make him. Uh hopefully hit and only when you want to attack me or otherwise be at a disadvantage yeah i love it good ploy good ploy okay uh, roll to hit let's see if you hit him with your crossbow ah it's a big old miss <laughs> damn it um Ooh. Well, I guess then I just I just yell out, "Hey!" <laughs> he does he does turn around, seeing this and kind of like looking back at you. Now you guys do recognize this figure. It's a little alarming. Um, as it looks back, you see his face is like this kind of mix of scales and so, and he doesn't even really have a nose, almost just like these two nose slits. And his eyes um, are also these like serpentine slits. It almost looks like he's part snake. And he looks back at you and he goes. This will be over soon for all of you. Um, he does turn to face you instead, though. Um, so that'll end Ivo's turn. See? All right, Thad, that's you. Um, Great. And then Rowena, you're on deck. Just heads up. Cool. Move into the room as well. We'll go about, yeah, 25 feet. And um, as Ivo uh, shouts to this uh, creature, so will Thad, and he'll shout for the creature to drop his weapon. Uh, on command? Using command, yep. What's the um, DC? That is a DC 14. Uh, constitution or wisdom? Wisdom. Uh, he rolled a 17. So he did succeed. Oof. Uh, ouch. <laughs> that was <laughs> my turn. Okay, no worries. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Bernie, the link should be pinned in the chat. I think I have it up there for you. Um... All right, uh, Thad, you said that ends your turn? Sorry. I'm gonna think yes. All right, and then Rowena, that's you. Real quick, do we recognize this guy? I mean, you don't, to hint at you it. don't recognize him, but you definitely know what it is. This is a UNT um, oh, person, right. and you remember that it, the UNT were um, hired also to assassinate you much earlier when you guys were still back in Tharvan and, and Jackson was aware that you were uh, out and about again. Oh, right. I forgot they were connected to Jackson. Okay, cool. Um, I would like to take my... Let's see. How close can I get to him? Uh, you can get in, in distance with him. Yeah, you can get like, um, right next to him I, if you wanted. 
Yeah, I'd like to get next to him, and then I'd like to attack with my rapier. Sure, go for it. You will get um, uh, advantage because of your background, and that gives you sneak attack as well. Perfect. Here's roll one. Oh, that uh, should be sufficient. Yeah, that definitely roll hits. Again. Definitely. Uh, and then, okay. Uh, yep. Great. Yeah. Roll damage. Yep, roll damage, um, and then add your um, sneak attack bonus as well. Nice. 20 points of damage on this. 6 plus 13 is 19. 19 points. Good. Big hit as you kind of like stab into him and you see him kind of wince in pain uh, and a little bit of blood um, comes out uh, from his from his abdomen there as you poke into him with your rapier. Anything else on your turn? That's it. Cool. Alrighty. Zunus, it's uh, your turn, sir. I would like to approach as much as I can and use my trident. Uh, what's the range on your trident? It's actually pretty high. Um, 20 to 60 feet. Oh, that's if you want to throw it at him, which you can, if you'd like. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Right to right. the face. Go, ahead, go, roll to hit with it. Um, um, to roll my trident, do I just roll damage? Uh, so on that trident, um, yeah. if you're in your oh, wait, action spot, go. yeah, you just hit that plus, uh, I think four or five for you. I gotta look at it. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that misses, though. Not quite enough. As the trident just goes yeah. wide, and you hear it clatter against the door. Sonara kind of has to dodge out of the way as well. Um, also, one quick thing to note about your character and for everyone else to know. Um, you'll notice there is a yellow circle emanating from Zunus now. Um, he, at his level, um, an aura of protection now kind of surrounds him, uh, and everyone gets a plus three bonus uh, to their saving throws. Uh, anytime you're within that circle around Zunus, so just a heads up. I'm very grateful that I have some extra skill. <laughs> Thanks, Fishman. <laughs> uh, okay, Zunus, anything else on your turn, sir? I uh, can't really cast damage or anything like that, so I'm good. All right, that will bring us back to the assassin. Um, seeing uh, Rowena come towards him and hit him, he's going to attack you back. I want to call Uncanny Dodge. Okay. Yeah. I, wait, wait, wait to see if it hits you first. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that might be smart because he he's good, he gets a lot with that. So he first thing he's gonna do is turn around uh, and um, try to hit you. Actually, what's he hitting you with? His short sword. He gets advantage on that first one. Misses second one. Oh, second one's gonna hit. Okay, so. Uh, a couple things. Um, first thing, you take six points of piercing damage. Okay. Plus. Is that with the dodge? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh not yet. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> you might want to wait just a second. <laughs> not done. Uh, plus 14 points of sneak attack damage. Because he also gets that bonus. Uh, and I also need you to roll a constitution saving throw for me. Oh, good. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Okay, uh, so you also take 24 points of poison damage as this creature just stabs into you with this huge, sickening knife. Um, are you alive still after all that? No, because I only have 20. I had 27 after my short rest. So how much is that total? Uh, did you call on Candy Dodge on that? Yeah, I did. Uh, so... Uh, that's half of, what is that, 24, 30, 30, and 14, 44. So 22 was how much it okay. did to you. So I'm just barely alive. What are you at right now? Still up. <laughs> I'm at five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been I've been back in weeks, and, and we're still playing this game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that'll end the assassin's turn, I think. Uh, actually, it won't because he gets two attacks. Uh, she's gonna go again for you, Ruin. I'm really sorry. Uh, you're the only one really in range. All right, we're using warding flare on that uh, attack. Uh, remind me what warding flare will do. Uh, so it makes it so that uh, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Perfect. All right, let's see what he does. Get that. We'll see what he can do. Let's see what he gets. First one. He rolls. I don't know why it's being silly. Here you. 
There we go. Oh, okay. Well, the first one was a nat 20, so it got its disadvantage. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. I don't know why it's being so Are you weird. saying that to the assassin or that? Uh, to both, really. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that disadvantage saved your life. You rolled a five. Uh, so the second shot does miss. Uh, it doesn't hit you. Uh, so that'll end the assassin's turn. It's now Ivo's turn. Can you step away? I might be able oh, to. Oh, man. Play. Yeah. So, no, I'm here. So, Rowena, you're you're knocked out, right? Quite right, because I'm at five. Okay. You're at five. Yeah, you're still alive. Oh, you're at five. Yeah. Because, uh, that. Okay. Well, um, let me go back to my map. Sorry, I was moving stuff around. So, I was getting, he's getting frustrated at this because he's trying to save, he's already trying to save one person. Then he's seeing Lady Rowena go down. So, he's going to, he, he's got to step up his game. Um, so, I'm going to take, now that I can move again, take that step even closer. So, mm -hmm. put me just like right next to Rowena, just like the two more squares up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once again, um, I'm going to do, Shatter Spike uh, with Goading Attack. Go for it. And are you using like... Um... And with... And just... Go ahead. Uh, you said you're using Goading Attack again? Well, yeah. Yeah. All right. You rolled a hit. Let's see what you get. Uh, that does hit. So go ahead and uh, roll damage. Nice. Wow. Roll five points of damage action. All right. Uh, not a huge hit on this creature. As you see, he's able to kind of lithely dance out of the way. Uh, but goading attack. Just want to double check. Is there a DC or anything on that? Uh, DC 14. Let's see. Uh, he does fail. He rolled an 8, no bonus. So, nice. Uh, disadvantage in all attack rolls against other targets. So he's looking at you now, kind of laughing, and he's like, she's almost dead anyway. Uh, but he does like, seem to be pointing your ire, his ire at you. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? You do get um, another extra attack as usual with your Shatter Spike. No, yeah, I'm definitely going at him again. I'm fucking pissed. Yeah, um, I'm attacking him again. My shatter spike, just straight up taking it right into him. Yeah. Uh, that just hits. Nice. Okay. Damage. Nice. All right, another 11 points of damage. Is this one now? You're kind of got him in front of you, and you're more and more frustrated. Starting to look um, like he's taking some damage, but still pretty pretty ready to go in this fight. He is not even really close to backing down just yet. Um, Thad, that's back nice. to you. Uh, how's Sonara looking in all of this? Has she been hit at all? She, she has not. Looks like uh, Firo might have been trying to defend her. He was kind of knocked aside. And right as soon as the assassin was about to point his um, focus on Sonara, Rowena walked in. Okay. Uh, all right, Thad's gonna uh, make his way up. Make my way downtown. Here. <laughs> so small. I can't see how. Wait, one sec. Was I oh. here? I'm trying to get bigger here so I can see uh, how much I can actually move. Uh, do you want to be in a specific area? I can move you to. I want to end up. If possible, uh, that's 35 feet. Uh, I wanted to put myself between Rowena and... Uh, uh, I would I say... I can't do that. I would say you, I will allow you to move through Rowena's space because she is uh, an ally. So you could move there Amazing. if you were coming down. So I, I, I'd allow it. I will do that. Um, and turning my back, uh, or the majority of my broad <laughs> back to this evil <laughs> monster... I'm going to heal uh, Rowena. All right. What are you doing and how much? Uh, 
cure wounds. We're gonna do it at second level and hope uh, and pray to Helm that we get some good rolls <laughs> in here. Uh, let's see. Ooh, one eight. That's not bad. Yeah, nice. Uh, Fourteen points back to Rowena then. Nice job. Great. Thank you, Thad. Uh, anything else on your turn? Uh, that's gonna be it. Alrighty, Rowena. That brings us back to you. Okay, I have two questions. First of all, what exactly does being under Zunus' his um, umbrella of protection offer? Um, it would give you um. Uh, a plus three bonus to all saving throws. So that first one you rolled to try to avoid getting poisoned, it would have given you a plus three to that roll, as an example. Okay. Um, I'd like to go okay. under there and then kind of to the to the north, to the top of the screen, so that I have a good diagonal line on A1. Uh, the, and the, I'd like to... Give you attack of opportunity, attack Rowena. Damage. He misses. All good. Yeah. I wouldn't go too far because I'm about to go up. Unless you want me to stay here and heal wounds. No, more. no. Oh, I can. I can I go. I can heal um, wounds more. Yeah, I just want to. No, no, no. I don't need. I. I'm not worried about that so much. But uh, DM, can I go a little bit down and to the left? Um, and now I would like to shoot my uh short bow at him. Yeah, go for it. Roll to hit. Um, and I, you still will get advantage on this because now he's being attacked by others. Okay, great. Uh, which means you can apply your uh, sneak attack too. Uh, both miss though. Uh, um, however, for uh, my bummer. for a subsequent action, can I use my medallion of thoughts? Uh, yes. Okay, I'd like to read his thoughts. Uh, what's the DC on that for you? That is um DC thirteen. He does succeed. Ugh. So he kind of you you see him kind of squint a little bit, and then he like like you see him kind of slither out at you, and you see this little forked tongue kind of like wince off in your direction, uh, and he strangely winks winks back at you. Uh, on no effect <laughs> so far. Uh, Zunus, oh, <laughs> back to your turn. I'm gonna cure wounds as well for Romina. and. After I do that, maybe move up a little bit. Sure. If that's loud. Yeah, totally. So I'll cast Cure Wounds. Oh, seven. Seven points. Gives you back over 20, though. That's a win. All right. And then okay. you want to move, like, here-ish or further? Uh, as long as Rowena's... If she's, like, half in, then... Yeah. Let it work. Uh, don't worry about me, Zenus. He's in range here, too. I mean, it's a good place to be. He can yeah, still attack yeah, if he cool. wants to. I'm cool right there. Maybe try to pick up his trident later. <laughs> I would like to get that back. Um, can I can I use an attack as well here? Uh, after using a spell? Not that spell. That particular spell is an action, so you wouldn't be okay. able to, to do that. Unless you have any other bonus actions, um, but I don't think you do at this point. Uh, so that'll bring us back to the top of the round, uh, which is back to the assassin, who is now focused his attention on Ivo. Um, he is going to... Um, hit you. Uh, he will not get that because he doesn't have advantage. So he's just going to try and hit you with his weapon. Can't use his assassinate ability. Uh, uh, that does hit you and you, uh, you again, are going to take six points of damage, Ivo. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Ugh. You take 24 points of poison damage as well as the blade sneaks into you. So total 30 points of damage. Wait, I thought it was... Did you say 20 and then 6 or 20 and 10? It was 6 first from just the knife. And the knife is coated in poison and you failed it. So you take 24 points of damage on top. So 30 oh, 24. Total. Gotcha. I just uh, heard 20, but gotcha. Are you resistant or anything to poison damage though? Um, I, where would I see that in? I don't think I am. I don't think you are. Although actually I forgot about this. Um, yeah, Rowena, uh, you are resistant to poison damage. Um, right. so 24, that was reduced by half to 12. So actually give yourself six more points of, of health. That oh, would have worked like out it. to be the math there. 
Um, so yeah, you should be um, down thirty points then, Ivo. If only you were. If only we had a guy who is made out of metal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Great, great entrance. Huh? <laughs> uh, we'll see how this goes. We're getting there. Um, so uh, that will end um, the assassin's turn. Oh, actually, no, he gets two attacks. Sorry, I forgot. Um, he goes back into Ivo, and he misses Ivo. Um, so, Ivo, that brings us back to you. Your turn. All right. Well, I'm still really pissed at the moment for now that he's hurting me. So again, I'm going to take uh, my Shatter Spike just right at his ugly little head. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> uh, Roll to hit for me. Uh, Did you want to use like Fighting Spirit or anything? See if you give yourself advantage. Just a reminder uh, if you have it. Wait, I thought Fighting Spirit... I do have it. Yeah, you still, have, I think I have two more charges of it. Oh, it gives you an advantage. I remember it giving... Um, okay, yeah. I'll do it... Yeah, I'll do Fighting Spirit. Cool. Uh, and then... Um, then I get one more attack. Yep. Well, it, you get one more attack. So basically, you get advantage on both of these attacks. So roll again for this first one, and then you can roll okay. your advantage for the next one, too. Um, with the weapons, is it... To roll at advantage, is there a trick, or do I just have to roll twice? Nope, just right-click on it, and it'll give you advantage or disadvantage. Sorry, that one was... Oh, here we go. Now I got it. Now I got it. Hold on. Ignore that one. Now I'm rolling at advantage. Okay, first one hits. Okay, it's in damage. Ugh, come on. All right, well, five points to him. Right in there. And then you want to roll that second one at advantage as well. See if that one hits too. Yep. There we go. Uh, nice. Natural 20. Uh, so uh, on the damage hey. roll now, right click and hit critical hit. And it will automatically do the critical bonus. This one should be pretty good. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. Nice. Now this assassin is really starting to look buddy. You see him kind of drop to a knee. He's looking pretty beat up. Um, still alive, uh, but it looks like he might be on his last leg. Uh, Thad, back to you, sir. Gonna reel around and swing. Helm's Retribution. All right. Uh, that hits. Two hands. Nice. That hits. Yeah. All righty. Right. Ten points of damage. All right. So um, this assassin starts to um, kind of stumble a little bit. He's still alive and shaky, but you can now see that blood starting to come out of his mouth, and his blood seems like bluish. It doesn't look red at all, and he kind of looks at you, and he spits on the ground, and he goes, <laughs> "You think this is all we have?" And he just like hisses in the air in this really strange, like like vibrato noise. It's a odd noise that you haven't heard and from the other window pane that's closed you hear this crash and a tumble <laughs> and another one appears uh same type uh, can I do oh oh good oh fun rolls in uh, kind of on the other window kind of runs there but you notice this one seems to be also a little beaten up and bruised and not done so well um, Thad would you like to do anything else on your turn um that is it right. uh, that'll bring us to um, Rowena okay um I'd like to what do I want to do? Am I within range to hit two with my short bow? Uh, or do I have to get close? You can hit either with your short bow, actually. Um, let me try. Let me try and shoot one with my short bow. Yeah, go for it. Roll to hit, and you still get advantage. Uh, 
Uh, that does... That does hit. All right, so you can roll to attack and do uh, your sneak attack bonus as well. Solid. So yeah, you swing through and it gets uh, kind of right past Zunus's like ear, uh, kind of makes a little wind ripple in his hair and just lands squarely in this Yuan T assassin's uh, head and like not even dropping the knife, he just falls back dead. And the other one you kind of see does like this guttural yell at you. Uh, but as that happens, uh, from the window that he came from, another figure rolls through and you hear the most odd thing you've ever heard. You just hear in dense voice, but you know, it's not dent. You hear sack tap and this Kenku figure runs through and just it's darkness. The whole room is quiet. There is nothing. You can't see anything. And then another thump, 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 thump. And then as the darkness fades in front of you is this creature, this Kenku figure with these robes on uh, and a quarter staff kind of in his hand and a short sword on his hip and a dead yuan T assassin on the ground. And as all that starts to dissipate and you guys are like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, on a flying broom coming through the window, seated, <laughs> <laughs> is Dent. And Dent says, did you say sack tap? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Hey, good to see you, Dan. Who's your friend? Zach, that motherfucker. And I kind of turn turn to the Kenku and try and suss him out a little bit. Um, roll an insight. He's check. not hostile, right? He doesn't seem hostile towards us. Roll an insight check. Oh, bad. Uh, it's hard to tell if he's hostile. He did kill the enemy. Um, you also get the sense that he has been tailing you since City of the Dead. You believe he's probably connected to um, the Urzatsurai in some way. Um, likely in a method of keeping tabs on you. Um, Dent would know this. Dent has spent the last couple of days with him. Uh, Dent has not had any rest time. Him and this broom and this creature... Uh, have been uh, <laughs> trying to get back caught up with you following the airship. Uh, and Dent has learned that this um, creature, yeah, this Kenku's name is Smoke. Uh, and he is a little unique. Um, he was a Kenku who was essentially purposely trained uh, for the art of substitute, subterfuge um, and assassinry as well. Um, and he has been tailing you indeed since City of the Dead at the discretion of Supervisor Ormond. Um, he doesn't know how, he didn't tell Dent this, but somehow he knew exactly where you were. Smoke, are you friend or cool. foe? Um, and he kind of looks at you, and in your same voice back, he says, Friend. Mm -hmm. I guess he could imitate us, just like... Or foe. Oh, God. Talk like me now. Talk like me now. <laughs> And it's perfect. It sounds just like you coming out of his mouth. Well, we could utilize this in the future. Utilize this in the future. And he like goes over to one of the assassins, just like, poof, like cracks his skull open with the butt of his quarterstaff. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, we just. All right. Bernie, are you still there? We might have lost you. I think he dropped out. Uh, I was going to ask. Him. I was gonna ask Dan a question. Yeah, he was just sitting doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then all, all the assassins are dead. There's seemingly no danger in the room. Doesn't seem to be. You do still have Firo on the floor. Now that you're around, he's not dead, but he's pretty badly uh, hurt and, and unconscious. Um, Sonara is there, kind of still shivering uh, in like this frightened state. She's starting to come to. She also gives the assassin figure a bit of a kick. Uh, as she's starting to kind of get back into her feisty normal self in front of you. I'm kind of noticing um, Fira on the ground, his like battle medic sensibility has come through and he starts hollering out orders. So he's like, Zunus, see how Sonara's doing. He runs over to um, uh, Hero on the ground to check his vitals. Uh, he is unconscious but breathing. You you get the sense that like any more damage and he'd probably be lost. 
Hey, um, I would like to. There's some wounds on him. All right. How much are you giving him? Uh, we're just gonna try and not a whole lot. Just five. Yeah, bring him back up. No worries. Bring him uh, up a little bit. <laughs> he does pop back up, and you hear. <laughs> What happened? What happened? You were out, buddy. Is that what that that thing is? Well, thanks, Sylvanas. You guys showed up. <laughs> I didn't think Firo was going to last much longer. And he's staying on the ground. He hasn't even stood up all the way yet. You put up a good fight. Speaking of the assassins, uh, Rowena, you you might have some experience with these folks do you want to check them out and see if they have any anything important on them i'd like to rifle through their pockets yeah roll an investigation check <laughs> <laughs> i know i i can always count on you to do some rifling uh yeah so you you find a ton of stuff um one, you do find a pretty hefty bag of gold. It's got uh, 30 gold pieces in it um, on the one that's in front of you there. Um, you do also find a bit of a cipher. Um, it's, it, it's, it's language, but you can't understand it. Um, it seems to be like some type of hidden text or instructions, but it's not in any type of language you, you can discern. I'd like to distribute six gold pieces a piece to each of us. And then I would like to uh, pass around the cipher and see if anybody can tell what it says. Um, let me check. I just got to look through one quick thing. I'm adding my gold. That makes up a little bit for getting mugged last time. <laughs> <laughs> you said six gold each, Rowena? Yeah. Cool. Uh, no one... No one can read it. No. Yeah. No one. No one has the ability to read it. Um, it. Yeah. It's. It. It also seems like. It's strange the way it's written. The. The lettering is is almost perfectly justified. Um, it, it doesn't look like a normal paragraph of text would look, um, which is why you believe it's some type of coded um, coded phrase or something. Uh. Yeah. Can I read the minds of the dead? No. It has to be a lib a live a speaking creature. Can I use the ritual spell comprehend languages? Would that do anything or is it just that it's coded? Uh no that 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 could help in this instance for sure at least try to get you a point in the right direction. Um it, yeah. if you're doing it as a ritual it's going to take you 10 minutes to cast it. And then I will take those 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so you guys are all in the room. Sonara is there with you as you're kind of consoling her. You're helping Firo kind of get back a little bit um, to health. He's seated on the on the bed that's in front of you there. And you see Dent kind of um, lay down, like sit, sit down at a desk, lay the paper down in front of it. And he's just staring at it in like perfect robot stillness, just staring at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Dent, do me a favor. Roll a... I want to just check one quick thing that would help with this one because it's still coded. I want to see if you can figure it out. Um, one thing you can tell is that you can see what the letters are. Um, and the letters um, are in an abyssal language, which um, you definitely know as someone part of the Urzatsurai that abyssal is the language used by most demons. Um, but it just seems to be an amalgamation of letters for this, this moment. Can you do me a favor? I will allow you to either roll a... Um, Arcana check, uh, or you can choose to just do a straight intelligence roll um, to see if you can discern uh, what it says. It's the same bonus for both, so it shouldn't matter for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with intelligence. Yeah, go for it. Not bad. 17. Yeah. So you can pick up hmm. a few pieces of it, although you can't translate it entirely. It is definitely hidden. Um, it basically says... Um, our 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 master's directions um kill the lord um praise grot uh one thing that seems strange though is um you you recognize the name grot a bit as you guys have been sitting here for 10 minutes and they've been talking a little bit about it um grot is typically spelt with like a z um 
but it's not the way it's written here. It's written with two S's, which seems strange. Do we think they're like uneducated? Or this is just a, a different interpretation? Mm, roll a... Roll a religion check or a history check. <laughs> roll a spelling S's versus Z's check. <laughs> <laughs> this is I very biblical religion. Hebrew. Hmm. <laughs> I roll religion. Um, it's, it's really hard to tell. You're not sure. And you've never really heard of Grotz yourself. Um, what you do know is that you, you remember that the UNT serve a snake god named Seth. Uh, also spelt with two S's. So S-S-E-T-H. Uh, and it seems like maybe there's a connection, but you're, you're not sure what. Uh, in the meantime, does anybody need healing? Not that, I mean... Not that I can volunteer because I don't have much to offer in that area, but uh, Ivo, do you need anything? Um, I mean, I'm definitely halved in my hit points, so could use some healing if possible, yes. At least regain a little bit in case we run into, into some more assassins before we uh, um, take a, a short or long rest. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere, guys. Uh, I'm really sorry, but I probably need to stay here for a, at least a little bit longer to recover a bit maybe right. if you really don't need me anymore um i'm probably just gonna head back to sylvan Astra. uh zunas um this is for you and he slips a note uh into your uh, into your hand you. Just, uh, you can open it really whenever um but it'll give you uh, give you the way to come find me <laughs> oh, i'm gonna i'm just gonna go find another place to Sleep or my blood's not on the floor, if that's okay. He, <laughs> like, walks out of the room. Thank you for the note. I'll read it later. Later. Can I share it with them. everyone, or is it private? I don't care. I mean, it just keeps going. It's, it's like, not it. stopping. Firo, Firo is over trying to be assassinated. <laughs> Thank you. That's the, that's the look of In a guy case, who I we will see up. again alive. <laughs> I read the note aloud. Uh, you read the note aloud? Yeah. Uh, it says, find us on Sylvanastra. His temple is clear in the center of the woods. Find us on... It's like Rowena's got this covered. Yeah, I got it. His temple is clear what? Uh, in the center of the woods. <laughs> All right. So what I'm, what I'm wondering and concerned about is how did these assassins and grots know that Sonara and Fira were here. So I guess I turned to Sonara and I asked her, since you parted ways from us, did you did you run into anyone? Did you speak with anyone? Did, were you followed? Like, how do you think anyone would know that you, you both are here? Uh, I have no idea. Honestly, we, we remained hidden. Fira approached the temple by himself. Um, he made sure that I was um, not to be seen by most of the staff here. So maybe... I, re I really don't know. Um, it's possible, I guess, maybe there are magical means of spying on people. Mm. I don't know. Maybe, okay. maybe whoever sent them has been watching us from the beginning. Maybe That's there's fair. a mole here in the temple. It's also possible. I guess we can never really uh, know for sure. Why did you, um, why did you come back, though? What is... Well, we wanted to check in on you. We wanted to see if the that you were distributing the... Let's call it a vaccine. Um, <laughs> very trendy word nowadays. Uh, you're <laughs> distributing the vaccine to everyone, and uh, not just the rich people, but the people who actually needed it. Um, <clears throat> and then to see if we could help you establish your seat again um, and your power. I assumed as much. I had heard that um, Jackson had already tried to take in my seat, and I figured we would be making our way back there to reclaim it soon. I didn't think it would move this quickly, but before I knew it, assassins are here, and I didn't honestly believe I had much longer left. He felled Firo. He fought, but it, it wasn't enough. The quickest way to make sure that uh, no other assassins are sent your way is to make sure that other people in power see that you're alive. 
So I think we should move quickly to get you over there. Are you, are you guys in a good position to travel? If we go to Wadup, I'm sure there's going to be more fighting. Are we planning on doing something else? Um, Ivo, I'm going to heal you for 12 HP. Ooh. <laughs> wow. It is a gift. Thank you, sir. And say, uh, I think we're, we're looking like we're in fighting shape. <laughs> um... Speak for yourself. You didn't, get, you. you didn't get hit. You didn't get hit in that one, but but thank you. I will take the hit points. Yeah, I, I'm 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 duty bound to fulfill whatever needs to be filled for the protection of the of the island, um, and I'll go wherever you need us to go. Um, but I want to be clear: if we're heading towards Wadep for an altercation with the council, um, or even the Lord Ruler or Jackson, it will be it will be a fight. The very least with Jackson. And he's already okay. proven himself to have powerful enemies. Uh, we forgot should to we, tell you. Should we kind of... Oh, you go ahead, Dent. No, 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 no. You, you're the boss. Oh, we neglected to tell you that we've come into possession of an airship, so you can ride there in comfort. Oh, that's exciting. Um, I mean, I've been on airships all my life, but I'm sure it'll be cool. This no, is this, is a, small, this is a small, this is a small, special airship, <laughs> nimble, the smallest you've ever been on. Are you <laughs> familiar with the like room, But it's a whole ship. <laughs> that sounds as interesting as everything else that's happened. <laughs> what a what would it take to sell this guy the airship? <laughs> so who are we selling the airship to? Also, don't it's truly enjoy the airship. <laughs> We don't, it's not ours to sell. It's true. It's... Uh, well, technically, um, they said no, you could keep it's, it. We, yeah. yeah, it's it's our, if not my, airship. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ivo's out back airship. painting like Mar Graves on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Naked lady. Yeah, come on. Don't forget oh, it. Oh, man. Well, I, I guess what, what, what feels like we're kind of dance around the bush of is do we need to start getting armed to the teeth here do we need to build some allyship up like what's kind of because it sounds like if we're going up against jackson we got to be going a full strength and b we got to be going guns a blazing so what, what do we think uh, smoke smoke jumps in guns a blazing uh but uh sonara kind of looks at him <laughs> and is like not sure what to make of it um you know she recognizes what a kenku is but has never seen a kenku do anything other than tend to the city of the dead uh, and the graves there. Um, but she kind of looks at all of you one by one and she says, if you can get me to to Lord Rulibachus um, in the council, I'm sure I, I would be um, strong enough to state my case and to tell them what Lena and Jackson had done. Truth be told, I'm not concerned so much about the council as I am Jackson. Um, I don't know what other nefarious abilities he has up his sleeve, but he's already proven to be rather strong and powerful. Um, That's an understatement. I would prepare for a, certainly a combat encounter with him, no question about it. Um, him directly, or, or like one of his agents? Hard to say. I don't know much about him, truly. Um, but if he's in league with this Gross or Grotz or whomever this this demon that you mention is um, certainly he would, I would imagine, be pretty powerful on his own. He also clearly has control of several UNT. You've noticed how powerful they've been. Um, I, I'm, I feel confident I could speak to the council and get their aid. And my appearance would be enough to prove that Jackson is um, evil. But I don't know if it would be enough to to kill him, to, to end him, to stop him, whatever other uh, ideals you have. I also, speaking of Graz, I was about to say, I think we should, perhaps in addition to getting armed physically, get ourselves right spiritually somehow, because Jackson's obviously made yeah. a deal with the proverbial devil, and I think we uh, kind of have to, you know, obviously I'm, tied to Talona now and what have you, but I think we got to get right with our gods and make sure that we have <laughs> the spiritual strength to take them on. 
Wow, this is a very Anna story. <laughs> we gotta get all of it, you know, religiously speaking. <laughs> well, I don't yeah. know. To be fair, the, it, it's much easier for evil to want to intercede in, in our lives than good. Uh, so it, I, I feel like we can do our best, but um, even if the gods don't respond to our calls, doesn't mean that they are putting their support behind us. Um, well, I would like to start infusing some non-magical items in preparation for this both religious and non-religious conflict. Um, the mattresses. Do you do you guys want to like spend a day here and rest and just kind of build up some stuff and then head there in the morning? Do you want to just get there ASAP? Um, I, I think we should I to at least talk to these guys. There's there, there's a distraction happening right now in the form of a full on invasion of the city we just left, but that also means that the friends that we just left are gonna get their asses handed to them if we don't move That's quickly. True. That That's true. Dad, we need really to kill Jack right now. I want to kill That's him. Really good. Uh, yeah, we do. Need to kill him, here's but... the thing. I I want to kill him. I want to kill him, but he's got a whole demon army. At the very least, I think turning all of his human allies against him could be something mm, in our true. favor. And we do that by showing them, look, you're following a fucked up dude who is lying to you all. But I think, as we know from other examples, sometimes those people don't listen who are following fucked up dudes. That's certainly true. <laughs> it's true. I, I um, would never have suspected this from Lena. Um, certainly no one thought she was kind, but I didn't think she was outright evil. It seems as though you have two choices in front of you. I didn't realize that he had already amassed the armies and were sending him that way, so certainly we could head back to Castleton and provide aid. Um, I don't know if they would have a ranking member there. I, I truthfully doubt it. The council doesn't usually partake in, in, in acts of war. Um, or we could head to Wadep, to the castle, to Castle Wadep, and we could try to make way through, um, you know, their armies there. It would probably be less seeing that they sent most of them to Castleton. And I could speak to the council um, and try to get, um, try to catch Jackson by surprise. We could sneak in. Um, there's many options in front of you. It's certainly your choice where you think I'm best needed. These Do we think Jackson points. is with the council? Yeah. It's hard to say. Typically in these moments when there has been violence in, in the past, and certainly it doesn't come up, it hasn't come up for nigh a hundred years now, but uh, the protocols are to either sequester in the castle um, or to retreat to another area where you have had security of some type and you can be protected. Um, my, my guess is at the very least, the Lord Ruler, the leader of the council is, is at the castle Wadep. Um, I can't speak exactly for Jackson, but I would imagine he is going to be near the other council members, yes? So, this is all great, but <laughs> before we go anywhere, I actually, I've been thinking about this, and we were talking about kind of um, armoring up. Would it be possible for me to go do a little shopping for some uh, upgraded weapons or extra equipment? If there is, we don't have to spend too much time, but if there's something in the vicinity of where we're at. Um, well, I mean, the Temple of the Saviors doesn't have anything particularly useful. Um, I'm sure they have a small means, but they certainly wouldn't carry anything like arms. Um, they might have simple supplies. Um, I would say the closest place that you could find that is Castleton. The concern there is, as you said, there's an army heading that way now. Um, the other option would be Wadep, and perhaps we can sneak into the city. Um, I would perhaps avoid using the airship if that's the case. Um, but we wouldn't get there quickly. Like it would take us at least a day's travel, um, to get into the city sneakily. Um, we wouldn't arrive until the morning. Granted, if you're going to rest here anyway and take the airship, really anything is going to be on the day. My, my personal recommendation would be rest at least a day and continue in the morning. Um, certainly going fast, we might be able to catch some people by surprise, but if it's a fight that's going to happen in either location, doing so without having 
preparation seems problematic. Um, Castleton does have a guard. I don't know if you've left others. They may be able to hold off at least for a bit. If you can reach out to someone there, perhaps there's a way to do that ahead of time and warn them. Well, we do have the broom and I have full health. So I would be willing to go to the castle and warn while you guys heal up and, and kind of armor up. Um, Smoke kind of steps up at that point too and kind of like holds the broom with his hand and, and in your voice, Tent goes, I would be willing to go. Fucking love Smoke. <laughs> Is he like your sidekick, Dead? <laughs> He's my ride or die right now and apparently he can speak in my voice as well as anyone else's voice. Uh, he, <laughs> he hears you kind of say that uh, and you also just hear him make like out of, he opens his mouth and you just hear this like perfect mimic of like like canned applause. I don't know how to put that from like a sitcom. It's just like laughter and applause yeah. coming from his <laughs> mouth. Smokes, it's, smokes the best. <laughs> it's literally spot on. You can't hear anything else by, about it. I, I turn to smoke and I, I let him know that, that him and me are a team now and, and where I go, he goes and vice versa. And we kind of, we do one of those like brotherly arm <laughs> handshake. The predator one. Uh, <laughs> exactly. He kind of, he nods his head at you and doesn't really say anything, but he kind of shrugs and he's like, Listen, he can do whatever he wants to, but it's 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 all love between the two of us now, which is a lot coming from a robot. <laughs> Rowena, do, don't you have a uh, like, form of communication you've used before? I have the Sending Stones, but that only connects like to my friend. Yeah, that only connects uh, to Torm. Ah, dang. Unless there's a way to circumvent that. No, oh, I don't want to separate Tim from his newfound friend, but and especially because smoke. No, 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 seems no, no. He'll like come with can deal some damage. You're not, but you wouldn't separate me with smoke. Smoke would come with me. Would be the plan. So you would you leave us again? Yes. Oh. I know. Uh. I I think. Or we well, can all I, hang back. I mean, that was my original. My original thing was let's 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 arm up for a day. But if you guys really want this ASAP message delivered, you know, there's no better in my in my robotic opinion. The only way to do a job right is to do it yourself. <laughs> uh, can people ride Smokes back as he flies around? Uh, smoke when you when you mention like flying smoke looks very dejected and looks kind of down um, and he um, he makes a noise and it sounds like a cartoon anvil falling just like a <laughs> <laughs> smoke is smoke is starting to seem a lot like the genie from the animated Aladdin movie <laughs> this is one a little bit of column A a little bit of column B and you're like where did that voice come from <laughs> uh, but you do notice Smoke is looking a little exasperated um, and he's not he's not sure how to convey it to you but you see him gesturing at himself and kind of pointing out the window towards Castleton and then he points at you and points in the direction of Wadep and he waits a bit and he also goes and then points to himself and points towards Wadep too, and then waits a bit and points at you and then points at Castleton. So he seems to be indicating, like, I can go by myself somewhere. You just don't know exactly what he's trying to get at. I was also thinking he'd come in handy for battles because we can give him something to repeat and he can distract a foe, although we, we wouldn't try to have any harm come to him. He's kind of like moving his quarter staff real cool and like showing off that he he's he can he can handle himself. He feels confident. What was the um what was the first place that he pointed to for himself? Castleton. The city you guys just left, so, the one that's about to be attacked. So he's kind of implying he goes to Castleton for the warning. I go yeah. to Wad up. And then we yes. meet up. Yeah. And so maybe we rest for a day, rest up for a day. Try and get some shopping, well, or, or rest up for a day and then go, and then we have to decide if we want to be sneaky or take the airship. 
How badly are you in need of supplies, Ivo? Uh, not badly. It's just more so. I, I would think about this other time, but just there? trying to see if I could upgrade my weapons and yeah. just equipment. If I, you know, I found last time I went, I got some good, um, some good goggles that help my my perception out. I got a cool T-shirt as well, so maybe I'll do a little more shopping there for some chopsticks. <laughs> Um, but really just to use some upgraded weapons or just equipment in general to kind of aid us in this, uh, the upcoming battle. I want to point out that the t-shirt has its own page on the wiki, so that's potentially <laughs> under, significant. <laughs> under the artifacts and relics portion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like I to point that. out that before we leave, Zunus goes to pick up his trident. Okay, perfect. Yes, yeah, so you right do have it. Uh, it seems yeah, unscathed. Sure not forgotten. Indeed, you do have. Just didn't it. touch anybody. <laughs> just hit the wall. Click clank. Yeah. Uh, you hear the canned laughter come out of uh, Smoke's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like kind of the plan is. I think I'm fine with that to have Smoke go to warn them, us rest up because I feel like we need at least myself and I don't know where Weena probably needs some more. Um, hit points added on from like a short or even a long rest and then from there figure out proceeding to wadep um at that point smoke kind of nods and agrees um he'll uh he kind of grabs the broom from dent And then, oh, so he's, so he needs the broom too? I thought he could fly. And he, he just shakes his head at you. So they both rode in on the broom together? <laughs> you think, you don't know exactly how they got there. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought he was flying. I didn't realize that they were on a tandem broom together. Uh, you do, you he would... is my best friend. <laughs> and yes, we do. Correct. Uh, you do, you do know about this, the Kenku too, you notice none of the other, they don't have wings. They have like feathery arms. Um, okay. Um, and I, I don't remember if you learned this last time, so I'll, I'll dance around it a bit, but you get the sense that no Kenku can fly. And when you mentioned flying and, and him not being able to fly, he did, he did seem very saddened by that. Oh, poor smoke. Okay, um, but I guess unless anyone opposes it, let's send smoke on its way. Uh, so Dent grabs the broom. And I uh, give a tearful goodbye to smoke. <laughs> tearful. And he he kind of like claps you on the shoulder. Um, and uh, kind of, he gives you a look, like a, a knowing look. You feel, there is definitely a connection there for sure. Um, which I will explain later to you specifically, Dent. Um, and uh, he gets on the broom, kind of goes off, but as he turns away, he kind of looks back at you knowingly and just goes, sack tap, and then takes off. <laughs> uh, so he flies off uh, back towards Castleton. Um, oh, wait, did you actually want to tell him what to do or say? No one actually told him who to warn or what to talk to. I was I was gonna mention that, but then you proceeded with it, DM, and I was like, I guess we're gonna go. The, he just knows. <laughs> you know, he's been following us for a very long time. I'm sure he knows who we've spoken to, and maybe even remembers their names better than we do. He so, <laughs> and he did tell Dent on the way over here. We'll we'll share on that one a little bit. He he knows how to he he knows exactly where you are at all times. Somehow, he hasn't shared with Dent how he knows. Um, but there is definitely a way he can find you. Okay. So I imagine he'll probably go see Captain Better. Mm -hmm. Did you have, just so I know that, did you want any specific instructions or things he wanted him to, to, to share or do? Um, I would say to talk to Captain Edders and just warn him of uh, the approaching army. I think that's all right, guys. Yeah. yeah, I think that's all we can do right now. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Smoke goes in that direction and he's off to find Captain Edder and um, uh, get uh, 
get that warning out there. So he's off to Castleton. Um, you guys are staying in the Temple of the Saviors for a bit. You've got these two dead corpses in front of you. Um, uh, Sonara is around. Um, what would you guys like to do? You just want to rest and head out in the morning? Uh, do you want to try and do something specific? You've got maybe about... Well, uh, you know, in a minute, I will describe the infusions that I would like to make on my non-magical items, but I will let everybody else talk first. If you too, if you um, just want to write them in chat too, um, Bernie, I can um, or uh, Dent, sorry, I can uh, I can see it. Okay, will do. So I would I I mean, understanding I asked uh, Sonora about like a sort of weapons or anything about it. It seems like she said nothing. There wasn't really anything in the area, but I wonder is there like could I go outside of the temple? and see if there is any sort of um, just equipment shop or like a general store, let's call it, or anything that seems like they're selling some sort of artifacts or any sort of items. <laughs> um, there's not like a general store here. I mean, this is a pretty big spot and there's a hub up. So you can find n normally find general goods. Like you can find rope, you can find food rations, you can find basic day-to-day -day things. You're not going to find like ammunitions or arms or armor here like there's no defense force here it's not really what that's for <clears throat> if you needed like healing supplies if you needed certain components for magical spells you could probably find that here um, but you probably wouldn't be able to find like armor or weapons um, that kind of thing what if what if I wanted uh, better boots better shoes yeah I probably wouldn't be able to find that here man it's like living in the suburbs. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like <laughs> shopping at a really big hospital. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about, I'm talking about outside of the temple, right? I'm talking about the like the area around it. Sure. There, there's there's like small villages and things that would be around. Like there's oh, a okay. fishing area and stuff. But uh, again, you, you would really be hard pressed to find someone that was like specifically making armor. You could find good boots, but like they wouldn't be necessarily better than yours. Um, gotcha. Okay. Let, let's do this. Roll a. Just roll a d20 for me. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, I, I feel like if, this could really change change the course of, of uh, my inventory. How this roll goes. Ugh. Yeah, you go like door to door asking a few people what they might know, and nothing really comes up. You do get the sense like some family might have like really special family heirlooms that they've held on to for a long time, but nothing really seems. One, that they'd be willing to sell, uh, and two, that it would be super useful. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think then that, so I think we're all in agreement, right, that we want to do, we're going to stay here for the rest of the night and rest up, right, guys? It's only like three, right? So it's one or two. Yeah, it's still pretty so early that... in the day. It's not, you're, you're probably closer to like uh -huh. 4 p.m. after all of the stuff you've been doing after attacking these guys, because... Dent took some time to cast that ritual. Um, you've been talking through a bunch of this stuff. You've been learning a little bit about smoke. So I'd say it's probably closer to like four, maybe five. Well, I just want to know. So we'll be here for a while because I want to be able to communicate this to. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, what's up, dude? Uh, communicate this to Truna as she's watching. She's watching over right. the airship and not not really knowing what's going on. Yeah, I mean, you could just walk down. She's not far away. <laughs> okay, I guess I just want to make sure she knows and that the airship is safe and nothing is uh, going to happen to it. You, you can see outside the window because it's a little elevated over the lake. The, the airship is still there, um, and it looks like okay. a, just a large sea vessel in the middle of this lake. Oh, that's right. I forgot that she did plop it down like a boat. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. So it's going to be pretty... It's going to be pretty... Um, uh, not the skies, but uh, normal looking. It's nothing, nothing that would draw attention. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a giant ship in the middle of a of a closed lake, so that's odd. But it's not like we're <laughs> gonna send things there right away or anything. Well, I think I think we've established that yeah, that's a small vessel, so it's not that <laughs> it's not that giant. Sure. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay. I think yeah. I think we're good to just rest up, unless anyone else wants to do really anything else. Um, no, I'm, well, can I commune with Talona? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, walk me through a little bit of like, like, are you going to be doing it like in, in prayer form? Or are you just like speaking out loud? Are you going to try to find a private space? Walk me through that yeah. a little bit. 
I might regret this, but I I want to find a private space and kind of pray slash meditate and get aligned to Talona. Yeah, sure. Um, so She's going to bring uh, a little area outside of the temple a bit, um, kind of near um, the, like the, the dirt patch kind of outside. And um, you start to kind of just meditate and think through Talona and you feel this like sickly oil kind of covering you a little bit. Um, you don't see anything as you look down. In a way, it's almost comforting, um, but you can kind of feel like this this presence starting to kind of seep over you. Um, and you just hear. <laughs> hey, Talona, I would like to ask your guidance for this imminent battle with that disgusting scion of scion of Gratz, Jackson. I'll make an exception. <laughs> I don't normally talk um, just because you feel like it, but you've made many believers here in the last couple of days. I have? Yeah. It was part of the cure. Did you forget? All right. Mm. Aren't I your champion? Of course. That doesn't mean that I just do things for you. <laughs> Besides, haven't I already given you a rather powerful boon? Have. It's come in handy. I've seen and appreciated. Talona, I may be your champion, but you should know I'm chaotic good. Oh, we'll see. Well, I assume there's no love lost between you and Grat. <sighs> he doesn't even sit on the same level. The demons, see, they, um, they like to play God sometimes, especially the arch, the arch demons like Gratz. He's scary, for sure, but, uh, not something I'd be worried about. You, perhaps. <laughs> well, then protect me and my team so we don't have to worry about him. Oh, like I said. You've gotten enough from me. It's a lot of help already. All right. Well, respectfully, first of all, thank you. And if you can't do it for me, then can you at least just knock Jackson down a few pegs? Mm. Let's just see how good you do at making sure people respect the plague goddess. <laughs> If respecting you means defeating Jackson, I'll try my very best. And there's no response or anything. You feel the slick is kind of gone. Okay, well, that wasn't quite as bad as I expected. Uh, you cough just a little bit uncontrollably. And just a little bit of, like, bile kind of comes up and it feels like it stings a little more than normal. Okay, well, I go back to join the group. Uh, anybody else like to do anything before you guys take a rest? You see, I should just I should just type my stuff in the in the chat, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hear about it as well. And are you doing you it, um, Dent? Are you doing only your things, or are you doing it for your party member stuff too? Because you can you can give those out. I can do other people's stuff too. Because I can do I can do up to three infused items for myself, and then and sorry, is there a difference between attunement? And infusing, they, they they kind of go hand in hand. They're different things. So you can infuse a non-magical item with a, a thing, but for it to right. have effect, it needs to be attuned, and you can only attune to so many things at one time. So right. I think it's three, if I'm not mistaken. From correct, this. correct. But like, let's say you, I think for your, let's say you attuned or you infused something, you could give it to yourself right. and let's use it, dice. and and then you could use another infusion to give it to another teammate. Got it. Um, but but essentially, my limit is if I hold it, but I can give limit this to my my teammates. Correct, but they can only attune to three things at a time too. So like, um, I don't know if anyone has Got things it. they're attuned to right now. I, I, I think that does. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. I vote as two. Okay. Yeah, I've got two things. 
Okay, perfect. So it, it just things to consider as you're handing out infusions. Yeah, for sure. Um, while he's doing that, did anybody else want to um, do anything with this last like day before you um, head towards your uh, your confrontation in Wada? It's not too late that we have time. Zunus kind of decides to wander the halls of the hospital. Sure. In fact, he's curious. He knows that the virus is kind of taking a downturn, but just wants to see what's going on. Roll a perception check for me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it definitely looks much, much better. Um, there are still people that are there, but almost everyone seems to be recovering. You do still see, though, that there are, um, like, cots that are covered. Some people did not make it, um, and they're kind of still getting them into good places and taking care of them. There are quite a few less that seems like they've already taken most of them. Um, you do see Fenrisha kind of speaking to a few people, and Jethro, if you'd like to talk to them, kind of up to you. Um, but other than that, nothing really seems to be too out of the ordinary for this place. Yeah, I think I would like to ask Jethro if there was any way we could potentially get this vaccine, just in case we potentially come across the virus ourselves. Okay. Don't want us to get it infected right before a big battle. <gasps> Especially with the guy who created the outbreak. Say that one more time, I'm sorry. Oh, I just think it'd be wise since we're gonna go to see Jackson, the guy who essentially created this virus. It might be wise to get the vaccine or mm. whatever. Uh what have you. Uh so he doesn't infect us and we all, you know, for cherish. Sure. So you wanna get it from like care. Fenrisha or Jethro? Yeah, if we can. I've got some gold coins. Uh what it costs. Fen Fenrisha you know, as you kind of approach her and talk to her, she gives it to you gladly. Like she, she, they've been making multiple doses, so they have a lot of it. Um, as they've kind of been following through and, and able to kind of go through it, so she does give you uh, at least two doses of this that you have to dispense to the yarn stormers or the agents of hell. <laughs> Whichever one you guys land on. on. Is there anything? Yeah. Is there anything else that you needed, Zunus? Uh, is two enough? I'm actually not sure. Will two cover the five of us? Uh, I, I think guess so. Is dead, not three, uh, well, four of us. We've, we've never really seen a, someone like him get it, so I don't know if he's susceptible. Yeah, we're extremely grateful. Is there anything I can give you in return? Uh, no, no, you've already provided all of this. There's nothing else that we would need. Um, oh, do you still have my ring? I don't think it was on me. Oh. Um, well, no no rush, but I would... Since I'm not Did you have dead, I guess, can I have it back? She's not with you. She's outside of the temple praying to Talona currently. If it oh, is... Me? I have the ring? I can't remember if I held on to it. Or... But if I, if I have it, yes, I... Wildly oh. Oh. Yes. I don't think you had it. Give it a second. Wait, let me look at my inventory. Uh, you do have it. Dead. Someone has it. Just a heads up. So you can only you can only infuse three total. Uh, so you'll have to limit some of those ones. Two, I think for enhanced weapon and enhanced defense, they have yeah. to be um, like pieces of armor or an actual weapon. So you can't do it to like a torch. You'd have to pick like an actual weapon that someone's got. Um, or or a or a piece of armor that they might be wearing, like a chest plate or a, a pair of boots or something. So the that skin thing wouldn't count as armor, I guess, because it's more of a utility kind of kind of suit. Correct. Got it. Um, okay, and you're, I'll make investments. Yeah, and your arcane focus is, I think, your, for you, it's specifically your tools. That's what you focus your weapons through. Um, but for the other teammates, like uh, like uh, Zunus and Thad, they use their symbols of their god. Um, but yeah, Fenrish just kind of reminds you, like, if, if you could get the ring back to me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. She kind of goes off and she gives you those two 
uh, those two vials, it's probably enough for everyone in your party. All right, guys, do we know what we did with Fenrish's ring? Do I have? I don't think I have it. Maybe I do. I don't remember. I mean, pretty sure one of us took it. No, I one have... of us definitely took it because she was about to yeah. die. Yeah. DM, you don't remember who has it? I could find out. I'm I'm positive it wasn't Zunus. I think it was you because you were kind of connecting really well with her. Oh right. Okay. I don't see it in my inventory. I only see my signet ring from mm. the Stormwinds. But um, if I have it, I gladly give it back. Uh, well, you don't know where she is, and you weren't part of that conversation, so you'll have to do it at a later time. Uh, but you do have it. <laughs> we'll just say you've got it for now. Um. So. And how do I? How do we uh, actually take the vaccine? So you just uh, take a single drop of it and then uh, whisper something about Talona's power. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you just have to say Talona's name in their ear, and it's all right. it's all Kush. Uh. Speaking of Kush, <laughs> that's gonna just burn some sticks of incense. Uh, meditate. I believe it is about uh, 420. Uh, <laughs> meditate about Helm. And also, um, find some stores of wine if there are any in this house. There <laughs> are. That, that is readily available. There is food and drink, including wine. Um, there is a bit of a mess, like a mess hall. Um, that you can go to on the first um, kind of first area. Um, get there with ease. There's a few patients around, a couple other people in there as well. Um, and you are, uh, you find an area where there's like a keg of wine basically on tap and you pour some into your skin and, and indulge. Um, are you looking to strike yes, a conversation I, with anyone or? Um, well, I do just want to make sure. Oh, give me one sec. Um, all right, give me one sec. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'm uh, maybe getting a package. One sec, sorry. <laughs> well, I guess I'll, I'll get a drink myself in the hospital. All right. Yeah, you guys are in the mess getting some drinks, getting some things. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pick one up for uh, that if he needs. Get that some mead. <clears throat> Wait, are you, Zuna, so are you going to go find it, or are you going to, like, bring it back, or are you going to go somewhere and drink it? I'm, I'll bring it back. I've got a wrap uh. for the gang. Yeah. <clears throat> Zuna goes um, and gets everyone drinks. Tips handsomely. <laughs> There's no one to really tip, because it's, like, cafeteria style, but we'll say it worked out well. <laughs> Still, slip some uh, silver. Um, Nate, I, I mostly just want to make sure that I fill my water skin with uh, wine now so that I can utilize the amulet of the drunkard if necessary to regain quick hit points. Uh, yeah, you've, yeah, so easy peasy if you want to do that and then use your amulet of the drunkard. But if you guys are going to rest, just a reminder, you're probably going to get them back here in a moment too. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm I'm gonna save that. Oh, for, for later. Yeah, for sure. So no, we'll no. we'll say you've got enough wine in your water skin instead. Uh, uh, so Dent, just a quick clarification. So remember, you can only yeah. infuse three things total. Um, yeah. So if you're using mind sharpener, and you're using enhanced weapon, you're gonna keep those for yourself. You've got one more you can do for somebody else if you'd like. Oh, then let me just do my crossbow for me too. Uh, so you're gonna do um. Crossbow with enhanced weapon, your dice with mind sharpener, and then what's the last thing, the third thing you're going to do? Oh, so I can't use enhanced weapon multiple times? Uh, no, I think you can. You just have to pick something else. You can't infuse your torch because it's not a weapon. Ugh, but what if I wanted it to be? <laughs> uh, is there a difference uh, well, between enhanced weapon? So I, I will say that you could technically, if you want it to be like an improvised weapon, I'd allow that. It's not going to do a ton of damage, but you could but if you wanted. Arms. For flair, uh, why not? Let's, let's <laughs> let's do dagger let's do dagger so you're gonna do enhanced weapon on dagger enhanced weapon on your crossbow uh and you're gonna do um mind sharpener on your dice yeah buddy okay um there's a way to add that to your inventory and by the way those things stay until you change them or you die so nice just note that 
Um, now, the, tomorrow, after you rest, if you wanted to do that again three other times on three different things, you could. So it's three at a time, basically. Is Correct. The, is the one. Got yeah, it. Correct. Cool, cool, cool. But those three other things will have to be for other people since I can only hold three at a time. Yeah, unless you dropped one and like reset it to something else. Yeah. Got it. Um, so DM has has Zunus come back then with some refreshments for the group? Uh, I'm gonna say yes. yes, he has. Yes, he has. Okay. So I'd like to take a, take a, a thing of wine, however a glass or however he brings it. Uh, so Ivo takes it. He takes a couple swigs, and then um, I want to search the room for some uh, like parchment and a pen of some sorts. Yeah, readily available. There is a desk in the room um, with um, a quill and, and parchment to write on. Uh, okay, cool. So Ivo wants to sit down and kind of take another drink of wine and and you know, take a moment to, to ponder his thoughts and think of what he wants to to say and then write out a not a long but let's call it a, like a half pager kind of a letter <laughs> double space um, sure. double space <laughs> yeah and then sign it at the end um full and then he wants to fold it up and uh leave the room to find um I guess who we talk sorry who were we talking to was either the head nurse or the the guy or the uh, sorry names okay. or something. Uh, Jet Je- Jethro is like the head nurse who kind of runs this spot. You do also know one of the nurses name is Janet who's a little not fond of all of you but you know it, if you wanted to just find someone to mail the letter any of those people would be do would would do. Jethro is still so walking me, around so. Let me find Jethro. Okay. Um with the letter and I go up and I, I kind of very quietly say something to him and I'll go ahead and hand him the letter and I'll go ahead and give him, uh, God, how much would postage be in Wadem? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> let's call him, let's call it. I give him the, uh, this is very important. So I give him six gold coins. Uh, he kind of holds it and he goes, um, please, we don't need this. I can send it. It's okay. We have an hour. We not not far. Oh, okay. Um, well, here's just one gold coin for your for your time and for helping us out. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, who who is this going to? And how can I find it? Um, how should I deliver it? Is well, I asking. Just here's so I guess I'll, I'll write out the address or however they do mail, sure. and I'll just say just just send it. Don't no more questions asked. Uh, okay. Um, and he kind of looks at it and he kind of looks back at you and goes, "Okay, uh, I'll, I'll make sure it gets sent out in the morning." Thank you. Um, and then I go back to the room and I drink a lot more wine. <laughs> so much more wine. I love it. Um, uh, so, um, with that, I think, unless there's anything else that anybody wants to do, yeah, please. Go talk to, uh, what's her face? I have for, to go talk to Marisha. For sure. Uh, you, it's getting pretty late in the evening now. It's probably like 8 p.m. ish. She's, she's in her quarters. Um, kind of knock on the door and she says, uh, c- come in. I'll be quick, Fenrisha, but I just want to... My team told me that you were looking for your ring, so here it is. And we're most happy that you are alive and well and with us. Uh, th- thank you. This um really means a lot to me. And she kind of like dabs a couple of tears at her eyes and takes it from you. And she kind of holds it really preciously again. Um, puts it back on her on her finger. You notice it goes back on her ring finger. Um, uh, I really can't thank you enough. Um, for everything. I didn't. I didn't think this would um end this way. So. So. Don't worry about it. Don't think about the past. Just look to the future. Yeah. Um, that's definitely good advice. Um, what are you, what are you, you, you all going to do? What's, what's next? Well, I don't know how much I can tell you for your own safety, but, um, I think we're going to Wadep City. Um, she kind of like is drawing spirals on the desk. Um, she goes, you, you know, we're in this together. Yeah. I have to... Oh, right. Is she or Zatsurai? 
Yes. Um, oh. Okay. Also, you get the sense that like this is a subtle way that they maybe communicate with each other and like loop in that they are on that. Withdrawing the spirals. Mm-hmm. Like she's. Okay. It's basically like on the desk next to her, like or whatever. Like you get the sense somehow if someone is like consistently drawing a spiral, it might indicate something. Uh, well, it appears that, you know, I always knew Jackson was a bad guy, but it appears that his alliances might go all the way down to the darkest pits of hell, if you know what I'm saying. So, we intend to take care of him and, um, loosen his hold on the council and bring light and life back to Wada. Oh, well, I guess that's, that's good. Um, it's typically what we want, want too. Um. Will you be going back to the City of the Dead anytime soon? I don't know. Is there something you want me to keep in mind if we do? No, I just I believe both of our superiors asked that you return when you were done. Oh, right. Well, I'm sure we will. We intend to keep our promises. Trust me, we found ourselves in alliances and allegiances during this time to people far more unsavory than the ersatz or i i admire your your group so um we intend to keep our promise to them dent i feel you shaking your head <laughs> just like just from <laughs> afar like from like eight rooms down uh and like three floors over uh uh you notice that she kind of like um talks to you she's fidgeting with a ring on her finger and kind of rolling and she goes that's um that's a wise wise choice and she trust says, me i I have enough problems, Fenrish. I don't want to make an enemy of the Urzatsurai. Yeah, like I like I said, that's a wise decision. Um, but I'm I'm pretty bushed. If you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to sleep. Yes, of course. Uh, Sweet like, dreams. Says good night and walk out, and she's grateful for having her ring returned and goes on about her night. All right, so. Well, I, I think we've got everything done that we want to get done. Uh, uh, so I think we're yep. in a good spot where everyone wants to go ahead and take a deep, uh, long rest. Okay. And you no. wake pretty early in the morning. Um, we'll say like right at dawn. So it's probably like four, um, four or five, right, right, right as the sun is just starting to hit the horizon. Uh, can we take Wait, a quick so break? Yeah, of course. Oh, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you guys awaken uh, before dawn pretty early on. Uh, it's just starting to be first light uh, as you exit Temple of the Saviors. Um, wh where would you guys like to head? You sent smoke towards uh, Castle uh, Castleton and the Blackstaff Keep. Uh, he has not returned. You don't see him. Um, and uh, your, your airship is still out there. We'll just pretend like you told Truna what the story was so she didn't go anywhere. <laughs> she slept also on the airship. Uh, and uh, you guys can kind of choose what you want to do. Can we, just because I'm very visual, can we get uh, the map mm. again yeah, of absolutely. the area up just so we see where we're going or where we potentially could go? Yeah, 100%. Um, so right now <laughs> you guys are at the Temple of the Saviors. Um, you have been kind of given two places to go. Um Obviously, you can go to Castleton. Uh, at this point, off in the distance, you can see the airships uh, are at Castleton. There does seem to be some fighting, if not a full-on battle, some small skirmishes. Um, there are fires there. You can see there is fighting for sure happening in that area. Um, hard to get more detail, though, this far away. Um, the place that was suggested by Sonara, who is with you, was Castle Wadep. That is likely where the Council of Lords is, the Lords Council is. Um, which is likely to have um, Gavin Bacchus, the Lord Ruler, kind of the lead of the, the council there. Uh, maybe Jackson too, hard to say. Or you could try to sneak into Wadep and kind of figure out what you want to do uh, that way. Um, but you have been told if you take the airship, it will be pretty obvious. You could try to go high and decide what you want to do, but kind of depends on how you want to handle it. Hey, let's go, to, let's go o over land to Castle Wadep. Sorry, can you refresh from my memory? Am I and did I did I go ahead on my broom? No, um, your broom now belongs to Smoke, and he took it to okay. go to Castleton, and warn He's your allies there. I'm with, and I'm still with the party. Correct. Cool, cool, cool. 
All right, so I say we follow Arena and go to Castle One Edge. Let's do it. And are you taking the airship or are you walking there? I think we're going to walk there. Okay. How far is the walk? All about talk about the airship. <laughs> uh, the walk there... Um, well, real... Go for it. Oh, sorry. Um, so I'm wondering now if we're going to walk. We're kind of leaving the airship behind. But it'd be nice to have this kind of little bit of an ace in the hole to to get us out of okay. trouble if needed. Um, but do we well, have – does anyone situation? have anything on them that we could use? Obviously, we don't have, like, cell phones or anything like that, but somehow use to communicate um, in case we do – I need Truna, that's her name, uh, to, to come and scoop us up. Uh, I don't, does any, does anyone have, do we, we don't really have any way of communicating, right? I wonder no if one has anything to build something. I do have bagpipes. <laughs> oh, I'm really loud. Um, I think Thad or Zunus might have access to a spell called Sending. They'd have to prepare it and drop one of their other spells. Let me check. I don't I have tool. I have the right tools for the job. With thieves' tools in hand, you can magically create one set of non-magical tools. So, if there is a set of non-magical tools that would help us communicate, like a radio wave, I could theoretically create those. Nothing non-magical. That would. Encourage. What about a um, um, a clockwork toy? Do you have any clockwork toys that you can make that could maybe fly back? a simple message toy. pretty hard to make something like that in the span of like a day if you gave him a few yeah. weeks he might be able to figure that out even for a magician <laughs> yeah it doesn't quite work that way i'm way more than a magician I thought, that, I thought that artificers had this as a class feature but i could be wrong to do that i could be wrong artificers are so complicated i hate that dent picked this one uh yeah, you know what? I, oh, you know I, what? I think that's a no. <laughs> it's a not map tinker feature. Uh, let me check. Which I associate with uh, artificers, but I don't think it's. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, there is an ace in the hole that you guys have like never used, and I think you just shoved in the bag of holding. Are you talking about the dog? The dog. But I don't know if you could talk remotely to the dog. What about like intrinsically, like me and the dog understand each that's, other? That's what I'm trying to find out. You that might actually exist. Uh, let me. Let me he's out. a robot, and I'm a robot. Well, while DM, while you're looking into that, you said though that Thad or Zunas have spells that could potentially do this. I'm pretty sure Thad has sending, um, and you can use that to basically telecommunicate at least a small message to anyone, anywhere. Let's. Look it up. I'll look at my known spells. Yeah, the dog would not work in this case, but you could give the dog to Truna so she has like a buddy. I don't. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Are we just wait? Kidding? You don't. You want to just keep the it tactical in the, military you value of Truna having a buddy, and then and then we can talk. <laughs> Truna's an engineer. She built the airship. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You just love that issue. <laughs> I can go ahead and prepare sending, which basically allows me to send a short message of 25 words or less to a creature, which I am familiar in. It appears in their mind. That seems perfect. So I'll do. I'll drop a spell and I'll take that. Wait, are we just we're leaving uh, Truna and the airship on the lake while we go? It's kind of up to you if you have something else you'd like her to do. I'm just thinking. Yeah. I was just thinking of doing that and kind of telling her, and you guys can, if you have anyone else has a better idea or a different idea, but I was thinking of just giving her the plan and telling her pretty much take it to kind of the, the furthest point on the lake, you know, that she can go. So she's not up near the Temple of the Savers, but a little closer to where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of wait. And if really anything goes wrong, like if she gets into trouble and people try to like bother her, just fucking fly away but uh that was my plan because again she's just a ship out there um but unless anyone has another idea i feel like that's the best way to go no that's roughly what i was thinking i was just thinking we might need her to swoop in and uh save us from the castle but that's yeah come nab us up yeah 
Yeah, so I'm thinking once if that has that spell, that'd be perfect. Where if we do need it, he can send it and and uh, call her to come help us. Cool. You got it. All right. I'll say you nice. relayed that to Truna, who kind of looks at you and is like annoyed. Uh, she's like, I didn't realize <laughs> I was going to be a pirate captain, but sure. Um, I guess this is my job now. Um, can't go back to Castleton, so I guess I'll just hang out here. Uh, so she does. And there are quarters on the airship. It is small, but there are, there is a, like a lower deck that she can stay in. So she does agree to do this. Uh, not happy about it, but she does agree. Don't worry. We'll make it worth your while in the end. Yeah. Let's just hope I don't die. So cool. (laughs) Kind of whips her tail back (laughs) at you and walks down, uh, walks down below deck. I think that's pretty people privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is she is she as beautiful as the other two? Uh, in a, yes, but in a very different way because they're like very different species. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I'm trying to like give you comparisons of people that are like really attractive and pretty. Um, so she might be like a a Megan Fox kind of pretty, <laughs> while like the Leorwell and Liliane might be like. And Hathaway kind of pretty, I don't know. <laughs> like different different styles of pretty. That's that's very that's very like unique uh, people you just chose of a scale. <laughs> I was trying to think in my brain. I feel like when people think of Megan Fox, they think of like two thousands Michael Bay Megan Fox. It's like the like poster right. that you would put up as a fourteen year old boy, and then like the Anne Hathaway is like she's just really beautiful. It's a different style. So, so is Truna a smoke show? That's what the question is. Uh, I mean, everyone's a smoke show. That's when smokes <laughs> around. The smoke shows are plenty. <laughs> Fun fact: Anne Hathaway came out of New Jersey Community Theater. So. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> Whoa! <It's> like Anna. <laughs> <laughs> In case you guys are wondering what the connection was. <laughs> Six degrees of Kevin Bacon wedding. hits it again. Yeah. They heard the dragonfly references in my mom's toast. That's true. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Um, all right, let's get going. All right. So you guys start walking there. It, it's going to take you, if you're going by the main roads, are you trying to move kind of quickly in that direction towards Castle Wadep? Uh, I think so, but I'm open to other interpretations. Yeah, I don't think we have any need to go really anywhere else. We should just kind of um, go straight there. But I'm guessing, DM, from the look of it, there's only one way, only one road into Castle Wanda, right? Oh, I can't hear you. I don't know. Yeah, I can't hear him either. <clears throat> yeah, we lost you, Nate. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no. I was going to ask you, Nate, by the way, is that a new microphone? Clearly. Can't hear you. Nope. Yep. Okay. He's going to have to just do it all through sign language now the rest of the game. He's going to have to DM with sign language. <laughs> Wait, American sign language? Or... Good act out. <laughs> He's just talking about how hot Anne Hathaway is right now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I kind of walked through and heard something about a nah, 2000s Megan Fox. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's how hot uh, Truna is. Is Truna one of these half elves that I've heard so much about? No, she's Truna's the one that yes. piloted us on the airship. She's flipping the half she, Yeah, she's our pilot. She also, she's a pilot, and she's hot. And she's and the the other two were um, el, half elves, but she's a tiefling. I think. <clears throat> right. Yeah. How come none of her characters like have had sex yet? Uh, we guys have each other asked to have sex yet. Can you hear me now? Just wanted to make Zunas sure. Wants... Zunas has never had sex with a, a land bee. That's <laughs> I thought you were gonna you were, on, you were on land for ten years, so that doesn't necessarily happen. But I was in the too. church. <laughs> I, was I think we all know that the church can be a pretty seedy place when it needs to be, so don't act like that's okay. the <laughs> Um, Zunis thinks The Shape of Water was the documentary. <laughs> it's got a flap. Zunis' favorite film. 
Uh, oh man, God, this... that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> my my mic goes down, and it's just fucking nonsense. Uh, there is one way to go to the castle. It's meant to be a defensible position. As I try to regain control of this conversation, uh, I'll, so... go, I'll put you in a defensible position. <laughs> oh God, it's, it's gone. It's done. Uh, <laughs> You do get the sense that trying to get there on foot is going to have its own set of difficulties. Sounds like a good job for an airship. So what does that mean? Yeah, but that's DM. All of them. I mean, everything is going to have a pro and con. It just depends on how you're going to do it. So you can try. So, if, if you're going on foot, you can try to be sneaky. You're going to have to try to get around the castle's defenses the same as you would as an airship, just in a different way. So I'm wondering if we could, so we're with Sonora, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll pose the question to her because she knows this Castle Wadup very well, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Is there a, let's just call it secret passage. Is there any sort of underground way into the castle that you know of? Um, yes, but I'm not going to take you there. Why not? Why why not? That would pose other let's call them security risks. I'm willing to try and speak to the guards. I do have a way of proving my position that m might work. Wait, this is Sonara yeah. speaking? Sonara? Mm hmm. <laughs> Can you please elaborate on the security risk? I would rather not people not a part of the council know the ultra secret back door to the main place of governance on the island. So we're the security risk. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I well, if you think if you think you can talk to the guards and get us through, I see no reason to, I guess, not just go walking up like normal. Unless Sonara, do you think there's a concern, or anyone else have a concern about it? I don't have a concern. I think that it sounds like stealth is going to be our number one priority, at least before we get to the council. I would agree with so. that. The, For me, the, I think every decision needs to be reflected upon that being our, our number one uh, need. The castle guards would, would recognize me. The, if they have armsmen or military battalions before there, we would need to avoid them. I don't know if I'd be able to, to, to convince them of who I am. But the main castle guards, if we can get at least to the castle doors, I could get past i'm confident in they would know me okay so if that's the case then i would say have sonara kind of be our guide and let's cautiously with as much stealth as possible make it up to the castle into the castle guard so i guess you know avoiding we see anyone in the distance who might be trouble avoiding them and kind of just slowly getting up there uh, so I think here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little skill challenge um, for this journey. Um, so if things go well, you can get from the Temple of the Saviors to Castle Wadep <laughs> on the road within about... Oh, it's about 24 miles. 24, I'm going to say about four hours-ish if you're moving, uh, like pretty quickly on foot. Um, each one of those big squares, just to give you reference, is about 20-ish 20, 20 miles, 25 miles um, on the map. Um, so the Temple of the Saviors is still a good hustle away. So um, the first thing I would like someone to roll, anyone can choose, is an overall athletics check um, to see if you can get there in a reasonable amount of time. Anyone can pick. Uh, I'm I plus know. four on that. No good at athletics. I'm plus five. Oh, snap. Look who look who it is. Almost Anybody a else want to go higher? Oh. All right. All right, go for it, Zenus. Not bad. Yeah, so you guys are able to kind of keep up a good distance. Luckily on the roads, while there's still some like 
While there's definitely concern, you notice the travel isn't as heavy as it would be along the new road, but you're able to get to the crossroads with that lead between the high road and Castle Wadep relatively easily. Here runs your first challenge, though. There are definitely armed forces in this space guarding uh, this intersection, ensuring that travel is limited, especially leading up to Castle Wadep. Um, I will allow whomever is going to focus in on this uh kind of decide what you want to do if you want to try to persuade your way past the guards if you want to try to sneak past the guards up to we you have an invisibility cloak correct no that was what's her face right yeah that, that was bettany bettany had that ability correct um dm i want to make sure do i have to tell you i'm wearing my elven boots for stealth uh no i assume they're always on because you don't have to keep okay them. they'll just stay on that ability's passive okay uh, I'm plus three on But this board. does seem like your wheelhouse. Yeah, I'll go ahead and persuade. Right on. Okay. Uh, go what ahead about and... your stealth bonus? Oh, yeah, can I use stealth or it's got to be persuasion? It's up to you. However you oh, feel wow. like is the best way to get past these guards, I'm letting you decide. So, Zunus, I'm, I'm going to make everyone go and roll their own check, um, but I will let you decide how you want to do this. I might say what check I want you to roll, but for the most part, um, we're going like, to tick them off as we go. Okay, I'll do stealth because I'm much better at that. Sure, go ahead and roll a stealth check. See if you can convince this party to get away from it. Ooh, spoke too soon. Um, so you, you're you starting to get around there and you feel like you can get past them pretty easily. You do get past them without issue yourself. They rolled a six, so that worked out. <laughs> um, uh, and they start to notice the rest of the group appear and a couple of them are starting to approach. Um, and since you were kind of already behind them without them really seeing, um, you actually like throw a huge like rock that you find on the ground at a nearby wagon and spook one of the horses who just like nays up real quick. Uh, and the guards kind of put their attention over there or something was going on. The rest just kind of walks really quickly past them um, without really getting too, too much of uh, an accostment over in that side. Um, so you have gotten party mostly past the military group, although some of them still are, are still around, although you passed the checkpoint uh, without much trouble. Um, so you're, you're walking in closer to Castle Wadep. You're seeing a, see a few more of these folks. Um, you are getting kind of closer into it. You, you notice that Castle Wadep kind of goes, uh, in that direction. Uh, in front of you, you do see, um, that there are a contingent of castle guards. Uh, they seem to be wearing different armor than the normal armies would be. Um, so Zunus is gone. Rowena is gone. Who wants to kind of use uh, whatever they decide best to try to get past this particular group? Uh, I want to do... We said stealth or deception, right? You can pick. You just don't pick one of the ones that's already been used. You can't do athletics. You can't do stealth. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use my... <laughs> stealth. I can't do investigation. I'm going to use my intimidation. Okay. And uh, you're trying to like kind of psych them out so they start to approach you nice uh and as they start to approach you you just kind of like move like the trench coat that you typically wear a bit to kind of show a bit more of your metal physique and the the kind of lead guard that comes there stands back um and is like he's grabbing his weapon but he's definitely concerned for whatever you are and doesn't know what it is um, and that gives just enough time for sonara to kind of sneak out of the middle of your group and present herself um, to the guard captain and she says stay I am Sonara Moore home the rightful seat on the Lord's Council you will take me to Gavin Bacchus at once uh, and you see the kind of guard look out and he kind of looks around um, and sees a little of what's going on uh, and he kind of looks at his other guards and they still kind of close in and as they start to close in you see that she like pulls a necklace out from outside of her uh like the outside of her dress like bodice and she kind of pulls it and holds it and at the end of it is a ring and she presents the ring as he kind of approaches her uh and he looks for a second and he kind of sends a runner back to the castle uh and they clear away and let you to pass but he's escorting you he's walking with you kind of keeping you on hand um and he kind of looks at her and says who is the rest of this uh, this group, we can allow you to pass, uh, Madame Mornholm, uh, but we, 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 we aren't letting any other visitors inside the castle. Uh, and she 
insists that, that you guys are with her and that she'll take you. Uh, but uh, he seems to be giving her a lot of grief. Uh, would anybody else... I think I've got Thad and, uh, and Ivo left. She wants to own something to try to convince him to let you guys go with her. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go uh, with Persuasion. All right, go for it. So he kind of looks at this and he goes... God damn it. Listen, Wadep's a big place and I get it, but... I don't know if we're going to let um, strangers in here, especially ones as um, diverse as all of you. And he kind of eyes dent a bit up. more and... You know, I don't. I don't like the tone of that at all. He eyes. He eyes <laughs> Ivo a bit more. Excuse you. No. Uh, Fad, you might want to take up the rear. Anything else you want to try? Yeah. Let's see. Um, take first. <laughs> I <laughs> would like to. Uh use my this is a uh uh king's guard or something right yeah this is like the castle guard actual castle guard for uh castle wadep so like the okay uh let's see can i i'd like to Try to um, use my knowledge of uh, the. Hey, I'll, I'll just appeal. Does he seem like a religious person? Does he have any religious iconography or anything of that sort? Um, Amulets, etc. Not exactly, but I would allow it because all of these guards here are trained by Helm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll flex Helm on him. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Roll a religion Roll check. Roll a religion then. check. Nice. Uh, and you, you kind of see as like one guardsman to another, a member of the, the Watchers of Helm kind of bears down the weight and you say, uh, no, we will all be going uh, or I'll make sure the Supreme Watcher knows. And he kind of like gets stunned a little bit. You notice, by the way, when you mentioned the Supreme Watcher, his eye kind of flickers a little concernedly, but he does back up and goes, okay, um, but we're going to stay close by. Uh, and they all kind of walk up to the castle with you and they do allow you to go into the castle. And as they're walking you into the castle and kind of getting up, you do now see as you're really close to it. This, this castle is bigger than Blackstaff Keep. It is huge. It is its own fortress. It's almost its own little town. Uh, of this castle um, and uh, uh, they kind of open get you through uh, it, it past the kind of little moat that's out front dug up front you kind of go into it and you're up these stairs going up the steps past the main gate into the castle uh, and they walk you through a few halls until you get into this it's not really a throne room it's almost more of a kind of separate viewing chamber um, and there are three people seated here um, one in the center is uh, maybe like older middle-aged man, late 40s, maybe 50s, hard to tell by the way he looks. Slick back, dark hair, um, a little rotund in the belly, showing some of his age. Um, and he's wearing this like, it's almost comically like embellished breastplate um, with symbols of Wadep on it. Uh, and he has a little bit of like a, a cane that he's holding. Um, uh, and Sonara recognizes him and says, Lord Ruler Bacchus, I know that you recognize me. Jackson should not, should not be, should not have been allowed to take my seat. Allow me to explain more. Um, and she is indeed addressing Gavin Bacchus, who is the Lord Ruler of of Wadep. Uh, on this like council of lords, he is basically the one that oversees uh, most of it, and makes most of the official decisions that's going on. And he kind of stands up uh, and looks at the rest of you. Uh, and you see on his face uh, that there is definitely surprise. Uh, and he goes, "We thought, we thought you were dead. How is how is this possible?" Uh, and you hear, and she now explains the rest of the story to him. She says um, that Lena was the one that captured her all along. That Jackson was in on it. Um, you notice that Jackson is not in this room, 
um, and they kind of discuss for a bit. And you see more and more worry and concern on his face as he kind of shares what's going on, and she shares what's going on. Um, if this is if this is true, then what what are who are these people, and how did they come to be a part of this? She kind of and he kind of looks at all of you guys for answers, and he goes, "I demand to know more." Can I run a history check on my knowledge of Bacchus? Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, that didn't help. Uh, not much. I mean, you do know that he is the Lord Ruler, um, and you know what the Lord Ruler's function is. So, like, the Lord's Council is, again, like, the most powerful families really in Wadep. And usually that means wealth can mean a few other things. It's not really done. Like, the there are more... Um, like powerful families, um, these people aren't necessarily elected. They almost like vie for power and take control of the city. And the most powerful ones become on the Lord's Council. The Lord's Council all votes on who they want to essentially lead the Lord's Council. And by leads, it's a little hard to say because they're mostly on equal footing. Uh, but when there are big issues of state, when they have to talk to other um, other islands and do like international type of work, the Lord's Council, the Lord's ruler is basically who owns that discussion. Um, and you have learned that even though they say Lord, Lord is unisex in this case. Like there is a woman in the room as well. Um, they, they are a wide varied one. Um, you do know that Gavin Box has probably been the Lord ruler for about 10, maybe 15 years. Not the longest by far, um, but has been in a relatively good position and has helped the, the island prosper and do well. Um, he's not poorly thought of. He doesn't seem to be... Um, bad at his job, but nothing really comes up other than that. Uh, and who are the other two people in the room? I thought uh, you said there were three. There are, yeah. So there's two other people in the room, two other uh, members of the um, uh, the the Lord's Council. Um, none that you currently recognize, though. One male and one female. Do... Does it seem... Uh... How do I say this or ask this? <clears throat> do I get the sense that we're all of a sudden in any sense of danger? Is this kind of like they're very welcoming to Sonora? They're very glad she's back? Or is it kind of, do, do we sense that there's some something else going on behind the scenes? There? Roll, roll an insight check for me. You get the sense that they're not necessarily hostile. Um, and they are, maybe glad isn't the word that they see Sonara, but um, doesn't seem aggressive. Um, it's very surprised and very shocked. You get the sense they truly believe she was dead uh, and were bought into whatever story Jackson had sold them. Um, there are still castle guards in this space, though, including the captain that you had you know, interacted with earlier. So there are still armed men and women around uh, in case things get rowdy. Uh, but they don't, they, they have definitely, Gavin 100% recognizes Sonara. Um, he he knows her well. Um, he knows, he knew her father well. Um, and so you do get the sense that he is allowing her, um, he's, he's giving her quite a bit of benefit of the doubt uh, of what he's believing from her. Gotcha. Uh I'd like to um, kind of whisper Soto Voce to Sonara and be like, you know, tell them we have to take control of this situation before Castleton falls. Oh, okay. Um, kind of already doing that. Uh, <laughs> Lord Ruler Bacchus, uh, Jackson is an evil man. Where is he? We need to... We need to call off the the attack on Castleton immediately, um, and and we need to apprehend him. And Bacchus goes, um, given the certain circumstance, I believe that's fair. Um, and he kind of like looks over at, at um, the person uh, next to him there, uh, and he kind of gives her a couple of things that you don't exactly hear, but she starts speaking almost to herself. Um, and then he kind of, he, she looks back and, and, and she says, it's, it's done. He stopped. Um, Captain Edder is still alive. Um, they were about to take the castle just a bit ago, but they've called off the attack. That was too easy. 
Uh, can we maybe eyeball some of the uh, exits in this room to kind of assess our, our, our safety situation here? Uh, there's three doors that you can see. The one you came in and then two that seem to be behind the other side. Um, no one so far has been blocking the doors. And you notice as you've been having this conversation, the guards don't, while they still seem observant, they don't seem on edge. I'd, I'd like, like to see that. To kind of cover Sonara, just in case anyone should attack her. Do anything crazy. Um, so, yeah, as you do that, so Gavin kind of addresses the rest of you. So, if what you say about Jackson is real, then this is more than a concern. Send send a contingent, at least ten men, go to his house. I believe that's where he, uh, he said he was going to be staying. Um... Are, what else what else are we supposed to be doing in this moment um we need him here to do it if he won't uh if he's if he's not going to arrive then are you going to go get him i don't uh, assume he would come quietly so to speak yeah i also question how much that's going to serve to send 10 men to his house i feel like 10 normal men it's not going to get the job done you're kind of sending 10 men to their death yeah well jackson is not a fighting man he doesn't have guards in the security that we provided were guardsmen like these they would have listened to orders I, I've seen that that's not true how yeah I'm, I'm questioning a lot of what's happening here guys uh, I, I don't I don't like what I'm hearing from this council at all uh, but oh, nobody well. seems to be hostile so I, I don't want to escalate things I, one bit Ivo kind of leans over to Dent and just goes, easy. Yeah, Dent, Dent can tell. <laughs> like, they don't, they just seem more stunned than anything. The revelation you're sharing with them is very concerning. And while they seem to be trusting Sonara, the story so far that Lena captured her and was going to put this virus out there in the world, um, seems far fetched. So that's the sense that Ivo got from his, uh, his insight check. For once, I agree with our robot friend here. Uh, I don't know what you're suggesting, but I would remind you that you are in a very well-armed building with very well-trained guards, at least a hundredfold. So whatever you're going to say, say it, but I would advise caution. I am willing to and hear I out your suggestions, given that Sonara is here, but there is little else patience that I have today. Okay, I'm going for it. I would remind Please. you, Lord Bacchus, that you are in the presence of a lady of Wadev. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> uh, roll an intimidation check. Or a performance check. Whatever you'd like to do. Um, I'm better at performance. I'll give you the, the option if you were really trying to scare oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so he kind of does sit back down. <laughs> So my guess is you are a Stormwind then. Yes. I had heard rumors that uh, Luke's child was still there. Jackson had said that you had been killed, but somehow that didn't seem seem to line up with the other information we've been receiving. In either case, I can imagine that you are angry at your ex fiance but that's little reason to accuse someone of something. I would need more proof than that. If it were only the anger of a jilted woman, I would not drag these fine people from island to island with me, possibly to their own deaths. Yeah, that's big words. And lest I remind you as well, I am in the presence of many royals every day. So your title, or at least what's left of it, does not concern me. And quite frankly, the person who owns it now is the person who lives there. Sonara has testified. People at the um, Temple of the Saviors can also give their testimony about this, the rise of this cruel and unusual virus and the fast method of healing we brought. 
And uh, we have numerous other sources who can testify that this virus is man-made, made by Jackson. You're right. That is enough people to at least levy charges against someone, even if they are a sitting lord. In either case, we should bring him here. Uh, and as he like kind of turns to get up and start to give out orders, you just hear this. <laughs> and you see this huge like purple light kind of start to cascade in through some of the rooms. And as you kind of look out the window, you see that it's coming from the city proper a little bit away from Wadep. Um, and it's coming from the realm of the first raised kind of district that you can see in that area. And you do remember that is where the Stormwind Estate is, uh, supposedly where Jackson is staying. Um, and it's just this huge, like, almost this, like, thick beam that just seems to be going into the sky just real quick. And then in a second later, it just kind of whoop, sucks back into the ground. Um, and, and Bacchus kind of looks back at everyone with a very concerned look and says, go now. Uh, and I think that's where we'll end tonight. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool. Ooh, good stuff. Thanks, yeah, Gabriel. good stuff, friends. Nice work. Uh, getting close. This might be the final, the final encounter of this particular story arc. I'm excited. Be good stuff. Um, let me uh, kick off a scream as well. Thanks everyone for hanging out. That was. We'll see